Howdy folks, welcome to Mosaic Team 5 on the Albron RPG Network. I am Joe Treff, your Game Master for this evening and most other ones. And joining me are my friends Matt, Dan, uh, Olive, Kara, Spies. and Ari. Um, okay. Thank you for joining us, for hanging out with us. A couple of announcements before we do get started. Uh, we have bits and channel points, two different ways that you're able to support the stream. 
uh, channel points or something that you accumulate for free by watching. You can use those to unlock emotes. You can use them to highlight your messages. You can also use them to directly impact the story uh, by using them to redeem for either of the junk falls will always be junk options. Woo -woo -woo. Oh, I need my sign. Junk falls will always be uh, junk. The uh, political tract is ahead by 14 votes. Ooh. So well, well ahead. That is... Nice job, people! Because that's that, the right option. Something that will be coming up. Um, if you would rather have the uh, Scabrack clan pack aboard a colony ship and leave, vote for the other option. Boo. That's boring. <laughs> boring. Uh, I like bits these, that are one. Twitch's microphone. Someone's gonna do it. <laughs> you can use those to unlock different emotes. Uh, those are relating directly to the Starfinder characters, to uh, Shade, Bubs, Spice, Echo, and uh, Gibbs. Uh, unlocking those and using bits, you can directly affect the story in immediate ways. A few bits will resupply the fuel for the ship. It can resupply ammunition. A few more might supply a mosaic intern for the duration of the mission. Things of that nature. We also have a whole bunch of different social media things at Alberon RPG. You can find that on Instagram, on Twitter. Uh, it's a way to see all the different hand drawn maps. Right now, we don't have a map on. We just have this charcuterie board kind of kind of. <laughs> yes. We will one day. Oh, yeah. But to be able to see it much better, at Alberon RPG on Instagram, etc., etc. Oh, oh. 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 the chaos that's ah, happening ah, here. Ah, no. Where's your mic? Uh, Dan's doing the least amount of work possible to get the turn. Yeah. Hey. Great effort. So to see more, at Albron RPG on Instagram. We also have a website, albronrpg.com. There's information about this campaign, about all the former bounties. There are now links to every single session that's happened. And then tomorrow night at 7 p.m., we will be playing the final session of Adventures in Alberon Sea of Ice, DM'd by Kara. I will be playing. Um, we will have Matt, Miles, Olive, and Hannah all here for uh, the finale of this poor for of this four part adventure. Not a, the end. Not, poor a, not a poor fart adventure. Uh, <laughs> not yet. Uh, uh. And then next week we will be back for uh, Mosaic Team Five session thirty eight, and. On Friday, which I believe is January 6th, we will be starting Adventures in Alberon Campaign 2. This is a Feywild-based campaign called Courts of Everest. Uh, Matt will be playing... <clears throat> I, I, I was going to go around the table, but I realized I don't know what, where you guys are going to sit yet. But Matt will be here. I'm excited Hannah, to sit. Hannah, 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 no. Um, Tina may be joining us a or little bit later actually, in the campaign. Yeah, sit we'll here. Let me work on the chair. It's just so much easier. And then finally, no, we have Sirenscape for digital sound effects. You can hear what is called apothecary music in the background. That is Sirenscape. We could turn that off, and if we really wanted to, we could play a powerful organ music. Give it just one second. So Sirenscape, for whatever kind of sound effects you want, uh, cool digital tool set. Turn the organs off. And with that, I can jump into our recap. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus today. Not a sponsor. <clears throat> Mosaic Team 5. Santa Claus. Santa. Santa. E-S-E-N-T-A. Mosaic Team 5, last we played, you found a lost Pepco station drifting in the drift, seemingly abandoned on the eve of Christmas. Although they had themed this party around an event called Driftmas. As you navigated a long lost corporate Driftmas party set up but never attended, Bubs did his best to teach all of you the meaning of Driftmas. You gathered all three ornaments off the Driftmas trees to complete the Pepco challenge in the Mechanics Bay, the Employee Lounge, and a cryogenics facility seemingly rented uh, within this building. Bubs, you assembled gifts for the crew. Echo, a new planter, uh, to potentially start a garden together. Spice, a handmade calendar of tasteful yet spicy Polaroids. <laughs> and Shade, your present was saved for last. As Santa and arrived... Gibbs, I gotta give to <clears throat> yep. Gibbs got a coupon book. Yeah, oh yeah, Gibbs got a great coupon book. I also book. got I the, I got the little, uh... Shaky pencil thing. Yeah, I forgot saying, about yeah. that the too. Hula girl. The hula girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll get there. <laughs> hula <second>. pencil. <laughs> As Santa arrived, certainly not Santa Claus, but Santa, 
all capital letters. Each of you was invited to take a gift from his bag, each having been waiting nearly 80 years to be retrieved uh, from its owner. Jade, you got a whiskey glass set, Spice a cookbook, Echo a taco, <laughs> a taco weighted sleeping bag, and Bubs a bonsai tree kit for the Persian silk tree, which purports to be able to survive up to 300 years in dormancy. Spice, you lied to get a fifth gift, a shiatsu neck massager designed for long flights. You all left a variety of gifts behind as well. A shaving kit stolen from Dr. Maldross's fake office, a cigar cutter from the Magenta Fox Casino, some moist towelettes, and the video recording of Bubs and Spice's disastrous first date. And as you remarked that it wasn't the quality of the gifts, but rather that of the people and the time spent together that truly mattered here, you turned and departed. Though significantly richer after your Driftmas Day haul, including Shade's eventual tr uh, Christmas present, a hula girl, and a brand new 80-ish year old Maxim Tech Stargazer shuttle. As you load the final frozen reindeer onto your ship, Mosaic Team 5, your communicator goes off. And that is where we begin the sea ride. Give me just one second. Here's snow. Yeah. yeah. There's still so, snow. I, I literally, I brushed. I, I, it just keeps coming back. It's like I glitter. I can't get it off. It's so going to be here forever. It's just pine. It's going to be here forever. Glitter and fake snow. It's going to be I'll here forever. Green machine. That's why I said wait until the end of the year because I feel like it, that was just going to happen no matter what, you know? I bet you're going to vacuum it up and there's still going to be shit because it's like glitter. It is. It stays no, it forever. It is. The fake snow, yeah, I can't get it off. Oreo comes upstairs covered in Oreos, my cat. Mm -hmm. Meow. <laughs> that was that was Oreo. Yes. So as your communicator goes off, um, all of you who are on the ship, are, are you choosing to open this up? I would say at this point, who is bringing the reindeer aboard? This is the last item. I'm just in the like Bubs center area, being like, no, what? Because we decided that we were gonna take the ship with the engineering oh, yeah. cargo, so it's either one of the androids oh. has to have it. What is this? So Shay and Echo, the two of you transporting <laughs> on a, this shit. On a <laughs> dolly, <laughs> a block of cryogenically frozen and suspended reindeer. Your communicator goes off. Are you answering it within your, uh, or I guess you don't have to have spaceship suits on your Android. Who's hailing? You can see on the communicator, this is your boss, Peep. Uh, Echo. You gotta I answer just... for Peep. <laughs> I take it up. You pick up this transmission, and you can see Hi, uh, you see Peep. Uh, his ear is a little flatter than usual. Oh. The whiskers curled, um, and you can see his little paws even now, kind of like moving them around very anxiously. His Peep, <clears throat> but he sighs as he sees you, and you just exploded. Hey, Peep, and he goes, "Hey guys, I got off comms with Orion, and it's confirmed we're heading to Act to Akaton. This is a USR contract." The one that they send penal redeemers and bonded assassins after. And this contract is at least five years old, so there's been a lot of unsuccessful attempts. Um, the bounty is a businessman who has allegedly stolen government secrets from the USR. I'm going to upload his bounty to you now. And all of you get this little ding, 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 goes off around the ship. And, Do you uh, have an actual sheep? Yeah, <gasps> yes, I love it! <laughs> A bounty poster comes across. Oh, I'll throw it up on the combat camera. Ooh. Oh, it's upside down. Kasaka. I always do that. <laughs> and so, yes, they would seem to be a Kasatha. But he says it's a businessman who allegedly stole government secrets from the USR, as well as orchestrated the assassination of a Jacinto board member and a USR colonel. So, this Kasatha. Uh, Situ Aglo Van Tesin of Clan Ilme is now a military governor of the Akaton city called Perdido. Uh, it's, they're propped up by a local GPF garrison that's really taken prominence in the town in the last couple of years. Uh, you should have the bounty now. Um, is there any other information that you guys need? Uh, unfortunately, we've had our clearance to the Eclipse Mall, our repair services, the Relief Hunters, even the Reboot Intern Program has been revoked from us for now, so. You said the military government city called Pandito, and did you give a name to the gang that was? So the city is called Perdido. Perdido, yeah. <clears throat> and
And uh, what was the other question? The uh, you said there was a, was there a name for a gang that was surrounding uh, this person? The or? GPF. <laughs> uh, the GPF, the <laughs> General Protectorate Force. The one and only. The military, military that is comprised of. <laughs> Uh, uh, an alliance between the Drow, the, a few Sharen yeah. clans. One of them we just uh, <laughs> shoot off. I know them. I know them. Um, in terms to... of um, who he's hanging around with. Yeah. Yeah, the no, GPF. The GPF okay. That's all you really know. It's a local GPF garrison. Um, and uh, he would say, all, all I can really find on the map is that it says uh, um, GPF garrison Perdido. So I don't really know who's there. But. Uh, I mean, we're really kind of in trouble. We can't re-equip anything. Did you guys get the drone back? A that drone. might be useful, just to explore the base a little bit. Were we able to retrieve the drone? <laughs> Doesn't well, yes. respond. Right? No. Because no. you guys had to uh, chase them off, and then you set off the... Yeah, yeah the right. one... Yeah. Um, you know, we might have it here still. It's uh, might be under my junk. I'll okay. look for it. It's not here. No, I was gonna lie. We did recover a Maxim Tech Stargazer, as well as a repair drum for the ship. Maxim Tech? They haven't been in business for almost 20 years. You got a shuttle from them? Brand new. That's impossible. We discovered a way station that was being built it was lost in the drift on driftmas it's march this happened 80 years ago roughly echo yes at some point can you run a diagnostic on shade they're not really making any sense peep we located an old service station that seemed to have been waylaid in the drift it was set to open on Driftmas Day with a big Driftmas event. We arrived on this deserted space station to discover that all the decorations and gifts and scavenger hunt had been set up, and we had a wonderful time. I'm gonna ping him the news <clears throat> article that I found. Okay. He's going to turn, and you can see on his face and the white Yasoki fur, the colors change, and you can see he's like opening up the link. But he turns also to you as he's reading it, and he goes, Shade, you should really explain things like that. Like everything in order. Um, that's really helpful to me. Okay, hang on. And he kind of like reads through the article. And he goes, And you just happened upon this? Yep. I mean, weird, but okay. Um, we spend a lot of time in the drift. Okay, well, you need to get on your way out of the drift now. Are we picking you up or? No. Oh. Absolutely not. I went on one mission with you guys and it was a disaster. Well, I miss you too. Look, and all of a sudden from behind you just hear, and uh, <coughs> you can see Peep just turns and goes, squeaky, not now. And just kind of turns and goes, at some point you do need to pick this dog up. Okay, um, where would we pick that dog and up? And also this cactus thing. <laughs> Nikolai. Either. Nikolai, whatever. Nikolai. Um, he, yeah, at some point. But, where but, are you? I'm in Prime Station. I'll be there probably for the next three or four days, but hopefully not longer. Hopefully I won't need to sort this out and you won't do anything drastically off-putting this time. <clears throat> so you mentioned that they were sending us here to kill us because that's cheaper than than firing us? They are sending you here to do something that is so far been impossible. So if we die, what happens to you? Do well, you get demoted again, or? Probably, but there isn't even a mosaic team six, so I don't even really know. This might be my last chance. So I need you guys to do whatever you can. Spice, you Spice spent isn't time on the here. Comp. Oh, okay. Where is Spice? Uh, she's loading a rain a fa. Oh, we got an engineering bay, looks like. That's great. Um, okay, I'm going to choose just not to bring up the other things. But in the meantime, can you just ask Spice about Akaton? Her personnel file says she spent time there, so she might have some background on it. Okay. Um, if you change your mind and you want us to pick us up, you know how to call us. Any other questions? 
Did you miss us too? Any other serious questions? All right, peep out. Love you. And the calm goes dead. So, she's she putting in the coordinates. No wait, wait, wait. We should talk about this. What is there I, to talk about? What is there to talk about? We could have other options, right? Family dinner. Emergency family dinner. <laughs> Director, yes, please sir. tell everyone it's emergency family dinner time, please. Suddenly, all the lights go red and an alarm <laughs> goes off. And you hear emergency family dinner called oh. by Gibbs. Love this feature. Love this and the, feature. They, they go red and then... Jeez, I thought we were under Transition attack. Transition slightly God. more In blue, the heading towards the... Uh, the emergency lights the directing you to the, the, <laughs> the mess hall come on. Slices clacking down the hoop nice. In fear, being like, is everything okay? No, we should talk about where we're going next. Seriously. We should talk about that. So the order from Peep is to go to Akaton on a suicide mission that no one's ever accomplished in the last five years to find some influential... USSR guy who's now a governor that's like messing with a GPF. The USSR is the Soviet <laughs> Union. Shit. The USSR is the United States <laughs> Republic. Very different and it's so so close. Dead for so I don't think so Gibbs would necessarily know that. They've been dead for 50 years. Back, Back in the USSR. <laughs> Falling behind Spice. Um, if what's going on? Is there an emergency? Yes! I just explained it! Um, what, what, what happened? Okay, okay, okay. So, because you guys never answer your phone calls, and I recap the whole thing I just said, but I say it correctly this time. Okay. No problem. <laughs> so, this. yeah, what do we do? We have a ship. We could piss off Mosaic. I'm putting in the coordinates for action. No, wait! Give us 20 minutes to talk about it. I... Does anyone have any other options? I've been to Akaton before. And it's lovely and tropical, or...? I... love it. Okay. It's not tropical. It's mm -hmm. dusty. Sandy. I remember when I was there, I... Used to play, we used to fly kites in the sandstorms with the neighborhood kids. And if you didn't cover your face, you would get whiplash from the sand on your cheeks. And it was super cute when the kids would come back with red cheeks. But the sting would last for days. It was, I loved it there. Do you have any allies there? Any resources? Is there any way that we can blend in there successfully this time? Spice takes a deep breath. Just, I haven't been back in a while. It's, I have been avoiding it. Because you burnt a bridge there, or you decided you didn't like sand? Because you love it so much that you can't possibly go back. Pulling up what I can on Akaton. Yeah, go ahead and make a culture strike. More like that, Echo. I think I understand. I have strong oh feelings God. that I have been pushing down for a while. So Sucked all the good out of it. I'm gonna turn to space. Babe, whatever feelings you have, I mean, we all care about you and whatever you wanna share with us, we'll listen, but with the 14, as this conversation occurs, Shade, you look into your uh, Infosphere connection, <clears throat> and looking up Akaton, you find up uh, some basic information about it. It's, it's a largely desert-dominant planet. Um, there are a few towns that were created as a result of this kind of like burst of frontier activity, and that kind of evaporated over the course of the Vesk War as this became a hotly contested place uh, as a source of uh, uh, launching various operations. So um, now, if you think about like the Wild West, every like stereotypical dusty town, that is what these places look like largely. Uh, in Bub's mind, as he like kind of gives that kind of like it's like a more of like a reflexive response, like yeah. kind of like you say something to like make the situation feel a bit calmer. Um, but in his mind, he's thinking back um, about various people telling him not to go to Agaton. And there's also just in the back of his mind, just a small nugget, something that he, he's picking at, but he can't figure out 
uh, if he remembers or not, about something in Akaton that makes him worried. Um, and he's just going to hold on um, to that information. Sure. Um, but he is going to share um, whatever you whatever you think, though, Spice, whatever you want to share for information. The target was last seen in the city of Perdido on Akaton. You familiar with that? I spent a lot of time in Perdido. So we're going to another emotionally charged place, and my concern is that we have a nil chance of survival, and your emotional connection makes this a hotbed for shenanigans. So how can we take our nil chance of survival and increase it at all? before we plug in these coordinates. Otherwise, we can't go. So Spice, one thing that you might know about in terms of this, you did hear Peep just talk about the fact that there are, you guys have no access to supplies, no reinforcements. You can't even get Efi back here to help you guys out. Mm. Um, however, you do know of somebody who lives in Akaton who sort of works within the gray market and maybe somebody that could be a source of some assistance, either in information or in terms of actual hardware, and some exotic stuff at that. You okay? I had yeah, that no. first stop that maybe we That was dread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I hope it's not someone. <laughs> Sorry, who? Sorry, what'd you say? I, I mean, if we need more resources and more connections to resources, I know Perdita well, and I think there's Someone we could see. Someone who loves you and owes you like a million favors or a Someone risk? who probably I owe a million favors. Uh, if I owe this town my life. If we go to Paradito. It might finally get its life that you owe it back. I've, maybe it's a debt that needs to be paid. Oh no, guys! Coordinates. Forgive the question, Spice, but I have to ask Is there possibly anyone in Perdido who might turn you in? Perdido? Do you know the phrase, home is where the heart is? I am familiar. My home is in Perdido. My heart is in Perdido. I have shared so much love in Paradido. Does that, any of that love help us now? I've been too much of a coward. Right now, I don't think is the time to, to be brave. We've got to figure out how we can survive this and stay under wraps long enough, draw no attention to ourselves until we can find our target and actually succeed at this mission. Uh, so we should visit nice. my friend first. Nice. You hear suddenly some shifting within the ship. Signature signs that your navigation has kicked on. What was that roll there, Shade? If it was a one, wasn't it? No. <laughs> it's a six. As it's always, a, we have a lot of time to discuss. Six days. <laughs> and then five days. 23 hours. And it begins to kind of count down okay, across well, a number of different screens on the ship. <laughs> I have so many days to work out my feelings, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, so maybe like some therapy sessions on the infosphere for a while. No fucking way, Gibbs. No fucking way. You don't even have to do it with me, you know. <laughs> There's like an app you can use. I like the idea of you guys sitting in different ropes going into the infosphere and still doing therapy. <laughs> it's because then I can use an avatar. Yeah, oh, man. Um, if, he, if he doesn't want to talk about it at this moment, she doesn't have to talk about it. She doesn't have to talk about it, but I think all of us have a responsibility to figure out how we're going to get out of this situation alive and an escape route if we fail this mission. What does that look like for us? Do we have any other options and resources? All of mine are tied up in mosaic. And I owe debt to Petrus IV. Wow. Well, but... And you happen to know, Gibbs, that debt probably gonna be called in relatively soon. I know. Well. So I'd like to at least die on Petra's 4 if we we're getting to pick planets to die on. At least there's a swamp I could live in. I... My... 
I don't even know how to... Spice takes a deep breath. I don't even know what to call them anymore, because I used to call them my family. Mm -hmm. But I've been too scared to reach back out with them after what happened. But Mommy and Kaku might be there. Julian's family might be on Akaton still. In Bo's mind, he like feels like the force of like that small information he was hiding behind his head like come to the forefront and now he remembers what he was thinking of. I am sorry. I don't think I was present for this explanation. I Spice. have someone in my life I used to love. Like, his name was Julian. And I don't know where he is now. But he was in Perdido. Do you know anything about the GFP that could help us? Uh, Spice grows Sorry, GPF. so loudly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that they're also in a bean in this mixed bag. Yeah. Okay. You're saying yeah, but like you're not really giving me more than yeah. Gibbs, have you ever been on the wrong side of history? Have you ever fought and killed people that you regret so fiercely? Wow. And have you realized it? Have you come to and gone, oh my god, what have I done? That's what the GPF is like. And yes, they're in Perdido. So Spice, I have nothing but empathy for a multitude of regrets that you are navigating through. I think it's important we spend time teasing out some of the things that you were actively responsible for and what you can and can't fix because regrets are only so helpful as long as you don't continue to make that mistake. They haunt me. They might haunt you. For what it's worth, <clears throat> at this point, you've been aboard for maybe half an hour now. And you have some cryogenically frozen critters that are... Oh. <laughs> I would say at this point, you see one of the foxes is beginning to kind of slide into the cockpit. Ah. Um, as the... I shut the cockpit door before it does. <laughs> and what's up with these Holy foxes? Oh, this off. Thump. <laughs> it's just kind of hits the door. But yeah, as, as, uh, as this ice is thawing, these three animals will... Um, if they thaw naturally, they will not survive. Um, you're going to thaw some dead animals onto your deck. Right when Gib says, and what's with these foxes, Echo kind of like slinks into the dorm room and just like... <laughs> so it's just the three of us? What's up, What's with all this stuff? Look, I think maybe we can change the subject and, and talk about this stuff. I, I think Spice maybe need like a second or something, but this is the stuff we got. You, you didn't go on the station with us, but we got all this cool stuff. Yeah, I like the tree. It's very, um, shiny. It's driftless. Nice. Very driftless. Let's uh, stall these fucking foxes. We have six days, so... Don't change the subject. We have six days. We should make a plan. We should all think about it separately. Spice, you are a key player here, and I hate to remind you of this responsibility but this is one of those situations that's life or death and we have no resources so if you could spend your five days 23 hours and 42 minutes productively i'm here to talk if you need to i think spice is going to get up very abruptly open and slam the sliding doors of the cockpit or wherever we are and find a fox. Okay, you open the door and you can see there is just this fox that has slid all the way past the dorm room from the cargo hold and is now like face first and like mushed into the uh, cockpit. You can see the other one has like slid into the door frame and then the reindeer itself wedged up against the uh, Christmas tree. Can I 
what do I know about cryogenics? I know pop culture cryogenics. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead and make a physical sciences check, not a life Can science I just check? <laughs> No. Make an damn. engineering check if you want. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, I don't want to make an engineering Plus check on that. Physical. Wait, a physical science? I'm actually pretty good at physical uh, science. 21. 21? I rolled okay. a 16. Not I'm bad. not good at it, but... That's, you know what I would say? Based on your medical training and yes. on the kind of knowledge that you have about medicine, you can tell a hard, frozen biological object that rapidly thaws... Um, the interior of the cells will rupture the linings and they'll basically just explode. That's not going to work. It needs to be done in a very controlled manner. And typically that involves specialized machinery. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> that's like... You would need to find something that seals relatively tight around a person or a, <laughs> a reindeer and then also two foxes and uh, fill foxes. that with a near frozen solution and then allow that to slowly bring them up to right. temperature. So they're I probably already dead. No, I take one of the foxes and I chip away as much of the ice cube as I can. Okay, sure. So uh, it's just the body. Uh, you, are you doing this in the cockpit? No, I do it in the like main area. Okay. And I'm gonna put it inside of an eco suit. Okay. And then I'm gonna take the fox and put it in the freezer. Before. Okay. And so I have one frozen fox that will stay frozen. How and viable is this? And yeah, so it's at least a fox in an eco suit. Whose eco suit are you using? You guys don't fucking give. Us. Fucking watching. Are you not using my eco suit? Yeah, I am. Well, watching I find happen. the one that's like clean, fresh, yes. starched, oh, yeah. and I'm like, that's the one I'm using. Watching this happen, how viable is this gonna be? The... I would say, Shade, you have no knowledge about this kind of I stuff. have a very high physical science. Make a physical sciences check if you want. Um, but, Gibbs, you have a good Damn. idea that this dice. this has the potential to work. Right. Yeah, uh, for one of them. Yes. Um, the other one... It's not viable. And the reindeer? Uh, Look over at this reindeer. It's it's an entire reindeer. Can I oh. assist in the dethawing? No, 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 no. We can't dethaw. The whole thing is we can't dethaw unless we're gonna like control the dethawing. Right. Well, isn't that what you're doing? Uh, I'm. I can control the dethawing for one that fits in the freezer. There's no way we can fit a reindeer in our freezer. We can fit a one, one little box. Piece. Yeah. Um. Oh. Can I? I obviously put didn't it think this through. In no. the, <laughs> In yeah. the airlock, the two ice cubes in the airlock. If you put them yes. in the airlock, I'm going Can to I eject them. Can I crack the window <laughs> of the airlock? So it's like gold. <laughs> is it a new question? Yeah, Can I, I crack them? Can I crack them? Oh, With no. a physical <laughs> sciences no. check, what I'll tell you is that, so that's a vacuum. That is a just cold. Space bomb. And Can I just crack the hyperspace? This, what they're frozen in, so as you look at them, it's not just melting and becoming only a fluid on the ground. Yeah. There is a vapor that is being released, so you know that this is not just water. Okay. This is a pretty complex chemical solution yeah, yeah, yeah. that is probably keeping them aerated. Right. When you remove oxygen from living organisms, they die. Oh. So. Oh. oh. <laughs> I can't have it both ways. Cracking right. the window open on your spaceship, <laughs> never a good idea. Also, in a vacuum, it would never freeze. It would never unfreeze. Like, right. Well, the whole oh, thing is, no. I can't solve this problem <laughs> now, but I can push this problem like endlessly. six months down the road until we need the that's freezer for something months. else. That's floating endlessly. Oh and that creates some pressure space. imbalances. There's some <laughs> violence that will happen. All right. I'm Tur turn I'm in this the ship around. Yeah, turn in the airlock. <laughs> um, well, first I'm going to check in with Spice. Spice, how attached are you? I can save one fox, potentially. Well, I got two, just in case one died. Oh, okay, good. Uh, so I kicked that ice cube. <laughs> well, you have to try both. <laughs> oh, it's not going to It was hurt. like a... Fit. I want to be oh, able okay, to okay, save okay. both, right. so but I, take I got Spice's two in case ego suit. Happened. And I put it in Spice's ego suit, right? Perfect, yeah. And then I go into the armory or wherever arsenal, and I also get Spice's hair dryer because I know she's got one. Yep. Um, and I put that in the airlock, <laughs> and oh I just God. lay the air dryer on the ground to passively <laughs> warm it as <laughs> slowly as possible. Yeah. Okay. Without cracking it. Um. And then the deer? I don't have any clever solution for this deer. Well, the, the deer, I, I was thinking... Solution. In all honesty, I don't really need the deer, but I'm thinking <laughs> if you look at the deer, the deer is from 
A, a place I've never been to, if you look at its genetics, and it looks like it was frozen in time. So I'm thinking with the deer, I don't need it as a pet necessarily, but I'm thinking we can sell it or use it as a barter tool. I can't sell exploded... I can't sell exploded deer bits. And you Echo, guys do have six days in the drift. Echo yeah. comes out with a little hollow pad. It says, I found a recipe for reindeer chili. It says it freezes well. All right. I put. I open up the hatch door to the stockpile. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I shove it down there. The, the whole deer? <laughs> yeah, and I close <laughs> so the hatch. Gonna and That's I'm just going to wait. Oh, five five by five. So, the, no, so the hatch is huge. The hatch yeah. is about five by five. So you can definitely, right. you can fit a a, a a block of deer. Is it walled You're off? You're breaking or? elements of the deer off to get it down there. Well, well hold on. First I run down and I grab all of my meat pucks and okay. I move them elsewhere. So okay. I empty yeah. the it's place that I'm going to... You have plenty of space in the hole. It's yeah. not a space issue. No, no. Yeah. It's not a space issue. It's when the deer explodes. Yes. I don't want my meat pucks covered in deer bits. Fair enough, fair enough. So it's a cleanliness issue? Weird. We yeah. Cash Weird cash line to draw. Yeah. So, if you wish, you can definitely do that. You take all the meat pucks out. Getting the deer down won't happen in a solid. You'll have to chip off the antlers, certainly. Um, I would say go ahead and make a, a dexterity check flat for whether or not it makes it through in one piece. All right. Um, Shade is just... As, as they're doing this... Um, watching this happen. This reindeer Seven. has survived a century, and we're about to murder... You jam it down there. Okay. And, uh, uh, yeah, just completely... Ow! Yeah. It shatters. stabbed me. And uh, the legs break off. You see, like, the torso just cracks in two. You see, like, half of a stomach. You can see, like, chewed up grass. Mary like, Driftless. Yeah. <laughs> I shut out. the hatch, and I put the one couch we have on top of it, the oh. door. So you drag this couch into this main intersection of yeah. your ship. Really kind of That's blocking going you to reek yeah. eventually. No yeah, I'm not the one cleaning it, though. So, no problem. Literally, not my problem. Um, hey, director. Yes, Gibbs. How specific can you get with the freezer temperature? Could you just like <clears throat> increase it 0.1 percent every like 10 minutes for the next six days? Gibbs, the function of the freezer does not go that low. Does not go that high. Oh, oh, the function of the freezer. So you can't get it's specifics? It's a freezer. Well, okay, fine. Then it's just going to live there, then. It's not going to live there. It's going to die. Well. <coughs> it's already dead. You've broken it. No, the deer broke. The fox. The fox. The fox, the fox, the fox is, is going to die. Certainly. Well, I tried. <coughs> <laughs> what did you want from me? We the... wanted nothing. Okay. We did not initially consent to bringing the frozen animals on board. Okay. The people who did had no took no responsibility, had no part in trying to thaw them. Fantastic. Well, um, Spice does want to be there when they thaw them because she wants to. We well, can watch telepathically. You can the watch fox them. through you can the watch thing and see how the hair dryer system works. <laughs> um, yeah, Spice will stand there because she has a lots of. It's your ecosystem. Working through, so she's Man. gonna stand I'm gonna there and watch Spice. Them I would thaw. say probably after about thirty minutes. <laughs> And she's whispering with her mind, like, soothing, like, I love you, you are loved. There is a brief bolt in that mental activity, and then it goes quiet. And Uh, you watch as this slowly, it goes from, like, a lump to more of, like, a liquid. um, And you get the sense that it is not, first of all, that suit, not going to be fun to clean out. Um, Second of all, that is more of a liquid now than a solid. Damn, so the foxes are... They they explode. I don't know what you think explode means. It's like... Wow, rip. Okay, so Spice just kneels on the floor and cries. We just... Okay. Very careful. Put them on the airlock. Pubs is going to comfort Spice. He's on the floor crying. Okay. (laughs) Literally trying. A couple hours have gone by now. You've murdered three animals. <laughs> That's not true. Not I check on murdered. the one in the freezer. I'm, I'm still frozen. I'm yes, moving them. Know that it's going to die. I'm, in a matter of hours. I'm moving I mean, it's, them it's, all. You know, it's, once it's, once these shenanigans have finished yeah. and we're set on our course, I'm moving all of the animals into the airlock. Wait, not Tiny Tobin. 
I need Tiny Tobin. Who the fuck is Tiny <laughs> Tobin? <laughs> <laughs> got the All the thing. frozen it's... animals. <laughs> the way it's worth also, Gibbs. No, it's not. I'll it. say, just shot away. there is a point where you you need to provide like life saving services to this rat, or it's oh, going to die. It has an entire syringe through it. Oh, oh I fixed that. <laughs> yeah. Like, how has it survived like, this long? Sometime through this, because it's yeah, a non lethal yeah, yeah. syringe. It is a non lethal syringe. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I would have fixed that once we like got on the ship no and problem. like traveled to the Driftmas place. It's a tiny Tobin. Yes. Tiny Tobin's fine. Uh, fine is a strong word. Tiny <laughs> Tobin bordering on like feral is this this rat. Seems to have maybe not been handled the best. You did find it in a laboratory. Right. Um, so like when you get close to it, it begins to hiss. Its fur is kind of ragged. Um, it definitely has like a little area that's been that was that's just growing back. So it was like probably either injected with something or had some kind of surgery. Uh, but like it, it, it's not a friendly creature. Yeah, that's fine. I take lots of pictures of it and send it to not Tiny Tobin, mm -hmm. the real Tobin. Yeah, so you're sending Tobin like this rat that's like, <laughs> and, and um, yeah. Yeah, Tobin sends back a couple question marks after the first one, and after the second one, it's kind of like, oh, it's like dust in the morning. Yeah. Um, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think after. Are you, is this related to animals? No, yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, you, I'm shoving them into I the agree. airlock, and then uh, in an attempt to be, you know, more sensitive to people's feelings, Shade is going to play some bagpipe music oh. over oh. the calm system as he jettisons them off into white the, foxes. The I knew no, not. No, Spice long. is going to keep the body of one of the foxes. Spice is not. That's going you to You can rot. hold the gross one for a while. The one that's in her suit. She's <laughs> just can, like digging her face into its dead the, body. So in the wine moment, bag full of fox. For those of you who wish to be, can be gathered around the outside of the airlock. Shade is still, Shade she, is yeah, yeah, I know. That's going into I the said, cockpit that's to why not. I said, those who wish to be, Stand outside the airlock. You can see through this small, like one by one, uh, square little window. This uh, gross suit. Um, Bubs, are you just leaving it? In the suit? <laughs> yeah. This is a total loss. I will take a, a, a. It's not an acorn on their head. It's a. Um, on the fox the ears. No, the um, well, the. Come on, guys, oh, deer, antlers. 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 I want an antler. I'll take an antler. Uh, okay, yeah, no problem. Well, Pups is just trying to comfort Spice. Okay, yeah, no problem. He's not involved in his, like, crime against humanity. So, yeah, as far as... So, <laughs> Who started this crime against humanity? Pups, you are losing your exosuit, so you'll, you'll probably want to replace that on the ship. I mean, point. no, my, my, um... Armor is fine, yes. Yeah, it has but if you, you're in bio suit. Yes. No, it counts as an exosuit. Oh. Yeah, but you do have one that is assigned to the ship. You're losing that one. Okay, so but we have vests need... still, so I'll yes. just borrow vests. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just, no problem. I assume we can just get have the ship make you one, just yeah. one on the ship. But Bubs also likes to have clean things in his yes. name on it. So. After so, some time has passed. <laughs> the, uh, the bagpipes play, and uh, Shade opens up this thing. Spice is sobbing, <laughs> holding a, a spacesuit full of wet fox remains and um, bones. Do, can I trade the wet fox for the antler? No, Spice oh. will not let go of the fox specifically. Um. I'm gonna see if I can just gout Spice to just like go to the uh, the bedroom with her dead fox. Okay. Um, <laughs> so with the mood set, you go <laughs> no. to the armor. No, just to like, oh, to, like to like make it less of a. Ew! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I see what you did. Bad timing. No. Um, trying to trying to like, save Spice's dignity. Come on, babe. Let's 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 just go to the armor. We can just have a moment of like you know calm things down. Spice grabs a couple vials from the med bay. Filled with Angrily. what? Empty ones. Okay, fine. Empty vials. Cool. It stomps off to the armory. Oh, None no. of them are Those clean are though. Filled with fox. I don't clean my <laughs> my vials. So, you stomp off to the armory. Uh, for the rest of you. That was weird, right? You found that weird? I, I found that weird. I did not enjoy any second of it. I feel like I feel like we should set like. Round rules, maybe? This is like the second or third time they've like come back and been like, do this, and it's like, I can't. Like Maybe one ground rule should be no cryogenically frozen creatures on the ship. Yes, you know what? And I rip off like a deli sheet, like a piece of deli meat paper, okay. and I just <laughs> stick it on the wall and I start writing ground rules, and it's number one, no cryogenically frozen animals on the Spice ship. Spice comes out and says, no asking me about my feelings. 
slaps another little sticky note up there on the wall. So you guys do now have a rules wall. That's yeah. nice. Maybe like a frat room rules it wall. It only took 36 sessions, but you guys got there. Establishing some ground rules. Boundaries are important. You do have about five more days in the drift, thanks to you, Shay. So it's not. Bugs is probably. Fuck you. Sorry, around technically spice. thanks to Matt. Matt's <laughs> role. As she's going in. Does it know. feel better to have it be you as a human <laughs> responsible rather than no. Shade as a character? No. Okay, so, Shade. Um, Bugs, what were you saying? Uh, yeah, I'm just following around Spice uh, as she like slams that onto the uh, the rules board. Um, and he's just probably like, oh, my Spice. Oh, oh, oh. And she's like, streaming yeah. down her face. He's like trying to like like control like this situation, but also Spice and just he's like doing a lot of these like hand motions where yeah. it's just like. But oh, I'm going to oh, oh, oh. look at, try and like make eye contact with Bubs and be like, you know, it's like, not like, like say it with my eyes, not with my voice, but I'm like, you know, it's like. I'm trying to get a sense if he knows that this is weird, right? Uh, oh, this kid's into me. <laughs> That's oh. a nice sense motive. Check for bugs. All right. That oh, is well. a six, probably minus one. Well, my sense mode is real high. So with a 20. Oh, no, plus three. So that's a nine. I will convey <laughs> to you. I think Bubs has a general sense. Um that Spice is dealing with stuff, but he's in a little bit of the beginning stages where it's like he's trying to downplay the situation. Right. And not make it like a big deal. Right. Where Gibbs is like, this is a big deal. Like, yeah. this is fucking weird. And we're like going to this place and we're like depending on her. And like, anyways, that's the, the mood I'm trying to convey is like, this is fucked up. Yeah. And in Bo's mind, he also has a little other things that's going on in his mind. He's like juggling feelings yeah. at the moment. That's fine. <laughs> After time has passed with the whole debacle, sure. <laughs> uh, Echo would go find Gibbs and say, you mentioned that we do not have any resources and Peep said we are cut off from the Eclipse Mall. Mm -hmm. However, we do have some contacts who you have a connection with outside of our Mosaic Eclipse Mall connection. Mm -hmm. Do you think your fellow Soki cousins might be able to ferry us some supplies without us having to visit the Eclipse Mall. Maybe. They might charge us a premium to do it, uh, but they're family first more than they were ever mosaic people, I could ask. It could not hurt. Sure. And we are in need. What do you need? Can you send me a list? It was more a thought. I don't have any needs immediately. I will have to think on it. Okay. Well, if you... I don't want them to ask them to do something unless we know we, like, need it, you know? Because then it's kind of, like, vague, right? I will work on a thorough inventory. Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you could do that, I'm happy. To... I've sent them lists of things before, and they kind of, like, scrounge around and get what they can and, like, whatever. But, um, you know, I don't know if they've ever known anything about Akaton or anything. So, like, I don't know. I can ask. Doesn't hurt. Good yeah, thinking, I... though. Nice job. Would I know the name of the contact in Akaton that you were describing earlier? Absolutely you would. Um, so you would know this individual. Give me just one moment here. Uh, is a individual called Seljun Deme. Seljun Deme. Yes. And I assume I have their uh, contact information, like I you can just would. call them? Nobody oh. can just call them. They live off the grid. Okay. Um, they live in a... Um, go ahead. Make just a flat intelligence check. We'll see how much you remember about this. Okay. You have not spent a lot of... You don't maybe know this person a ton. Um, you definitely have come into contact with them across your dealings, especially when the war was getting bad. Even getting things like ammunition was difficult. This was an individual who could usually find those things. Okay, I rolled a flat 12. Okay. What is your intelligence score? Um, I have a plus zero, okay. and it's a solid 10. Okay. You Mid know range here. <laughs> that this individual, uh, they have a compound that moves. Okay. It is uh, based out of the back of a like a, a converted bus, basically, mm -hmm. and they drive in these narrow areas in a place that is known as the Worm Chun Wastes. Okay. Um, it is northeast of Perdido. Can okay. you get near Worm Waste? The Worm Chun Wastes. Worm Chewed Waste. Chun. Worm chewed waste. Sure. You're welcome. Worm chewed. And you said 
Sejun Deme, right? What? Sejun Deme. Seljun Deme. Um, it is spelled C E L J U N apostrophe D apostrophe M E. Seljun Deme. Okay. And uh, furthermore, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what you would remember. Uh, you know what kind of an individual they are. You know that they are heavily modified just due to war uh, injuries. So mm -hmm. a lot of cybernetic components. Um, not the most pleasant individual to deal with. But uh, for all of their various dealings with both sides in this war, they don't lie, and they're not there to like turn people in. That's kind of how they've made their business. All right, that's probably how Spies knows them. And this person has a family relationship with Julia. Th they do not. Okay. There's another set of people. Okay, so there's a different set of person. People? You had heard Spice mention two names. Yeah. Okay. Um, but those, Bubs has no idea. Okay. Maybe. <clears throat> but for Spice, no, no connection. Okay. Yep. <laughs> After talking to Gibbs, uh, Echo realizes that they're like not entirely of aware of what the city of Prudito is like. Sure. Uh, and while a more empathetic person might just Google it, uh, Echo knows that the best resource that they have for it is Spice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, you might want to wait a day. Oh, you can hear loud sobbing. That is true. Before but we, you knock on that door. We might want to give your cousins as much time as possible in order to find the things we need. It might be a little out of the ordinary. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I pull out my communicator and I just dial Chip and Crumb. Okay, no problem. Are you dialing the shop or one of them in particular? I will dial the shop first. Okay, no problem. Extension. <laughs> so you dial up the shop and uh, very quickly, right away, um, Chip answers, and you can see your Yosoki cousin's face, um, like only part of it, like the corner, way too close. <laughs> and then he just goes, "Oh, wait a second, Gibbs," and then just whoosh, zooms way out. And you can see he's holding probably it's like a weird fisheye effect, so he's probably answering the call on like the head of a drone. Um, but at, at that second, he goes, "Oh, hey, Gibbs." Hey, uh, ch uh, chips. Um, we got cut off from Mosaic, um, so I was wondering, could you, is there any way? Did you get fired, Skips? No, no, not yet, but probably soon. Oh, I'm sorry. Skips. I know, but you hey, know. you want to come work at the shops with us? Oh, maybe, uh, if I survive this, but probably, but, um, maybe. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I appreciate the offers for sure. Uh, have you met my friend Echo? Uh, you can see he like gets the eye gets woof, way close to this fish eye lens, but this Yosoki eye just peers back at you, Echo. Do you say anything? Hello, I am Echo. Oh, hi, Echoes. Um, and androids? Yeah, oh. I know. Sorry, Gibbs. Dime a dozen. That's okay. Um, <laughs> thing I'm not that So we got cut off from Mosaic a little. If I gave you funds, is there any way a shipment could? Go to Akaton? Akaton's Gibbs. Why is that far? Why Akaton's? Because our last bounty is there, but it's kind of a suicide mission that Mosaic's sending us on because we didn't do so hot on the last bounty, I'll be honest. Oh, sorry, Gibbs. Yeah, but I will survive and persevere, I'm sure. I hope if, so. If there is also a relay point that you have along the way to Akaton, I could potentially swing by and pick it up. Echoes, I don't know much about yous, but... We're not like that. We're sort of a pawn shops. We okay. can't drop things off. Normally, Crumbs would bring it, but Crumbs out, so... Crumbs out where? Crumbs said not to tell you. I knew it! And you can Chips. see the ears go down, the whiskers go down, your Yasoki cousin seems a little he bit... He went chasing that star chart. He said not to say. Yeah, well, I already knew, so not saying is just lying with extra steps. Keeps, and you can see his, like, the little pause over, like, the, the lens. He goes, you're losing connection, Gibbs. I can't really use you, but um, maybe tries again later. Okay, right. bye. Love and you. Then hangs up, and then right before he hangs up, you can see the hands going, loves you, Gibbs. Love you. Hangs up. I call Crumb immediately. Straight to voicemail. I leave a howler of a voicemail. Sure, yeah. uh, just ripping him a new one. 
But then I end with love you. Call me back. No problem, you do so. Echo! Do you have family? Are they ever this complicated? I mean, this one's complicated. The ones over there is complicated. Everyone on Peaches 4 is just, I mean. There was a time when Echo 42758 did not talk to me for seven years. <laughs> that must have been rough. Old. It was. We had a few relay deliveries to complete, and they would just show up and not say anything. Oh, man. It sucks when your coworkers don't get along. I think they were mad that I ate their cookies back in 22... 20... I forget when it was. It was a long time ago. That's fair. Well, you can always eat my cookies. That's okay. They're replaceable. <laughs> Shut there's up! Like, there's a, like, strained look on Echo's face. <laughs> Just like, thanks! <laughs> You're welcome. Um, man. Ah. Crumb went off, I'll tell you. Crumb went off. I saw him looking at a star chart and I told him not to do it because it was literally in that place that was super dangerous that we said we weren't gonna go. And um, he went anyways, and I'm sure he's dead now. Echo's like interesting sensors go off. <laughs> star chart to where? Star chart to, uh, it was after the Oda Thyax place. Remember, they were all gonna travel to Sirens, Mine of the Sirens. You were there for that. Oh, I was. Yeah, he was literally had a star chart for treasure, like plotting a course through that place that was like super dangerous. And maybe I should have gone with him. At least if I had been there, I wouldn't be here. But also, I know a thing or two about piloting. We never did check into that treasure on the siren. No, I mean, who would believe in that? Obviously, Why would you Crumb. That? Well, Crumb wants to believe in it because because he thinks his life's boring now, but he doesn't know the luxury in being safe. How could he leave that? Why is why is the the adventure and the chasing more important than Perhaps the team would be motivated for a detour if there were a chance at supplies and funds. Is mine of the siren is mine of the sirens on the way? So you're in the drift. There's right. not really like an on the way in the drift <laughs> in terms of like if you were traveling by physical space over generations, your ship could essentially get to Siren and it would be very far away. Um, in terms of the drift, you could recalibrate your course, which Shade has told you not the safest thing to do. Um, it can also add additional time onto your journey, but you can do it. Absolutely. We uh, are not in any danger of our bounty being completed anytime soon. That's a point. We just have to get Shade on board, right? And if we phrase it as going to pick up a form of supply that does not require mosaic. Yes! Echo! 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 And I give you a big old hug! Yes. Okay, yes. okay, okay, yes. okay. okay. <laughs> you say all of that to Shade and I will support you. <laughs> Echo sees immediately the flaw in the plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, together. Ready? Right now. And we walk to the cockpit. <laughs> so you open up the cockpit. Can we go to me and Spice in the bedroom? Yeah, go for it. Why not? And he's probably trying to, like, comfort Spice. Um, and, like, Spice, like, why don't you pick, like, two flavors? If you don't like the two flavors I picked out, like, like, it's not, it has to be, like, your dream, too, you know? Spice is just... <sighs> Come I'm on, you sorry. have to play along. I can't think about it right now, Bubbles. I'm too... I'm so sad this fox died. Just... For me, I, I get to go to my happy place, but I, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to, like, help, like, you, because I don't know how, like... Like, what can I do? Like... It... Fox... Do you even know who Julian was? Bob just like gonna take a step back. I, I've heard you mention him before. He was, he was someone very important to you. Yeah, he was in Perdido. It's really heavy. 
Ay, uh, ba Balos. He was a kid tonight. Fox. This fox reminds me a lot of his family. And as Spice is saying this, for what it's worth, you're holding this like spacesuit yeah. and you're like squeeze it and you can hear on the inside this like <laughs> it's like this gross liquidy kind of biological yeah. sound. Um Bub is kind of like he's he's being sympathetic, but he also there's a small part of Bub that's curious and he wants to press for information. Was was that what his last name represent? What was his last name? Spice kind of looks up a little bit, her eyes just like swollen from crying really hard. His last name was Uzumanki. Bub is gonna make a mental note. Um, I imagine Bub's really good at like spelling because he's very good at, like drawing. Yeah, that makes sense. It's so, just like a very you were very specific yeah. about things. Um, and like, I imagine Bub does like the thing, uh, like the the last four letters of it. it's like how to spell it that way. And, Uzumanki, whatever, whatever it was. Uzumanki. Yeah. Uzumanki <laughs> mixed with Manki from Pokemon. Yeah. AKY yeah. <laughs> or something, whatever. whatever. <laughs> you like, okay, that way. Um, yeah, Spice. Uh, he sounds... He sounds like a great person. Um, is that... Is it just that, or... Oh, no, it's so much more. I bubbles. He's gonna like sit down. Like imagine you're on the bed. He's gonna like just take his hand and like stroke your hair a little bit. What is it? I have so many feelings. So many are good, and so many are bad, and I am so confused, and I'm so scared. I'm so scared to go back to the Agaton. Look, we don't have to go back at this moment, but we do have to go back, but we have at least five days, and look, I, I'm not saying you have to face it right now. I think maybe it's time. I've been running away for so many years that maybe it's time. Maybe it's right. I'm going to uh, take your hand and put it in mine. Um, we'll do it together. Just like, just like how we think we'll possibly have a kid together. Ugh. I was going through the med bay and I, I found a, a test. Um, you could maybe just try it at some point. You know, maybe before we could go into this craziness of... Whatever happens. Spice is gonna freeze for a second, look down at this soup of box, but then up to bubbles. <laughs> this... But then look down again and go. <laughs> I have so much sorting I need to do. This feels so fast. I'm not ready yet. I, I know I feel the same way. There's just so much going on. I think if we just take it one day at a time. And you're just gonna leave and uh, he's gonna like leave and let you like along with the fox and everything. Okay. The fox, like it's a functional <laughs> fox. Okay. It's a biological it's like, soup of a it's fox. Like a, Gogurt. It has fox. all of the genetic markers of a fox. Not well, responsible. If it means anything, she's gonna like squeeze out a little bit into the vials that she grabbed. Ew. It means so much to so many people, but not to, to me. But yes, you can do that. So you, you take a moment where you take like the, the finger and you clip a little bit away and you just kind of <laughs> squeeze a little bit out. Why did this need a description? No, no it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile. Hey, as, Shane. We were thinking that... How do you feel about a supply run detour? We'd still go to Agaton after. The bounty, as you know. 
is not in danger of being completed anytime soon. It is, of course, a suicide mission with a five-year history. We are in need of supplies, and unfortunately, all avenues of gaining supplies are close to us, except for one. What are the supplies? I need some bullets, I need some needles, I need some med patches. We will also need wind shields and perhaps another glamour projector for spice, as returning to this planet has some troubling associations. And maybe one for the ship, too, because it's still got Squeak's face on it. That kind of says something, you know? We will indeed need a new paint job. The exterior of your ship does have massive, a picture of Squeak, mosaic, <laughs> Team 5 across it, and big, bold letters. And as we are wanted, it is best to not attract attention. After the supply run. What's the proposed supplier? Chip and Crumb. We retrieved a star chart during our foray with Harlax for the Mine of the Siren. It appears as though we have an associate present at the end location of that star chart. If we retrieve this, we will be able to afford supplies that are not strictly on brand. How far off course would we have to go to get to the Siren mines? So Siren, the system, yeah. is in near space. Oh. It's on the edge of explored space. So theoretically, no more than six days, the mines of Siren exist within this chaotic field of whirling debris, asteroids, frozen ice, to get into the mines of Siren, if they even exist, that's the hard part. Hmm. We have a shuttle now that has greater maneuverable capabilities, and we would not have to risk the director. And we, of course, have a wonderful pilot. Couldn't we? We have two wonderful pilots. Just visit Seljin. You're not there. And for both pilots, you recognize kind of turning on the cockpit uh, instruments. You can see there is a little light that is blinking. It is a sensor that indicates that somewhere nearby, weak, there is another ship. It appears as though we are not alone in our course. Do we know where, roughly, based on the radar that it's picking up? So it's not a radar. What the uh, sensor is in, in particular, it is sensing that there is another transponder nearby. Oh. There is no name attached to it. Whatever the signal is very weak, and it's odd to find another one within the drift. Go ahead and make a perception check. <clears throat> you peer out you through the windscreen. Nice. Windscreen. You peer out through the cockpit. Uh, that's not bad. 22. And you can see just the cosmic clouds that line this channel. But as you move here and there, there are places where it does seem to widen and open. And maybe there is one of these side channels somewhere nearby. And perhaps a ship. And if so, that might account for the interference, but this is a weak signal. Can I try to hail the signal? Make a computer start. It's a little bit too weak to directly hail, but as you think about the systems that you have available to you. Echo sees shade like moving to 22. the console. What are you doing? There's a weak signal from a ship nearby. I can see that. What are you doing now? Trying to hail it. Why? What if it's someone after us? It may be a distress signal. Something out here on such a low level of power is and true strange. Enough, in this moment, as you look and you think about distress signal, you tune over your sensors, and this is an SOS. If you're going to make this stop for this ship, are you also agreeing to make a stop for supplies? Those are wildly different circumstances. They we are can discuss not. It they after. are not. <laughs> the current situation is would a ship it, in distress. Would it help you to know that Gibbs' young Yosoki cousin is the associate in the mines, and they are in extreme danger? They're in SOS. When was the last time that you contacted Crumb? Well, I scolded him not to do this when we were last at the Eclipse Mall. But we were a little busy with Aura's Bay. I... I didn't think... 
When was the last time anyone has been in contact with Crumb? I... Unknown. Why? Does that lower his odds? Does that lower the chance of us going? We have confirmation from his brother, Chips, that Crumb has gone to follow the location of the star chart. Please. If we're going to die on Akaton, let's solve this problem first, too. Let's solve this problem first and try and help the people that are in the ship that is right in front of us. And then we help Crumb, and then we go to Akaton. Then we can return to this conversation. <sighs> Shade, you're so frustrating sometimes. Fine. I press all the buttons on the console to get to it to pull next to the I'm ship. Going to... <laughs> and I, nope. I can, I literally pilot shit. I have, I have. I'm snacks. literally sitting in the seat. I sit on your lap, and I will, will fiercely drive us towards. Shit. Shit is, Shade is not having that right now. So make competing athletics checks at this point, and this is really as Gibbs tries. Can to I do acrobatics because I'm twisting? Sure, sure, sure. We'll give you acrobatics. 17. Dirty 20. Fuck off. You leap. And as you do, you kind of lead him with your butt. Uh, Shade reaches out, grabs you by the hips, and just sets you down. This is like basically just keeping a child from touching a flame. Puts you down on the ground. Um, and you fully know how to pilot. Your approach, a little haphazard. Uh, and Shade, you kind of like ward off Gibbs. No problem. I get the co-pilot seat. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to try to pick up the signal and get closer to it okay. and, like, try to, you know, do a standard SOS, but also being wary that it could be a trap. So make a perception check now, and this is using your scanners. And I believe, if I remember correctly, you have oh, short-range advanced scanners? Yes, I believe so. Okay. The, it's yeah. over there, but... Yeah. So take a plus six modifier to this. Bubs is going to walk into the cockpit. So, okay. That's What's going on, guys? on top of my perception. There appears yes, to be an SOS signal okay. that Shade wishes to investigate. A, but he doesn't uh, wish to investigate farther away. SOS 29, signal. pretty good. You okay. can see out through the cockpit, um, the signal is getting a little bit stronger. And here and there, you see little elements of this cosmic snow that you had left behind. Mm. You remember previously this fizz, almost like uh, elements of ice that had been left out from something else. Um, and as it kind of hits your shield, it becomes almost like a little lip of snow that slides over and leaves behind. And in a way, it does look kind of like snow. And as this signal gets stronger, you recognize that this trail gets stronger as well. So you begin to follow it. And as your eyes follow this, uh, along with your tools, you do find a little channel within the drift and even peering physically with your eyes, you can see that within this channel, almost plogging it up, so much so that the sides of it disappear into the cosmic clouds, mm -hmm. a comet of rusted iron and frozen ice. Perhaps even the one that stopped the progress of the station that you had all just been at. Bad damage to mm -hmm. the front of it. A comet? Yes. Frozen ice around uh, maybe a core of uh, like good. rusted iron ore but largely ice. You can see uh, frozen elements of blue that kind of come off of it. And you can also see that there are these um, tunnels kind of bored into it. In, in that initial impact site, almost like a big, uh, like a crack, you can see maybe three or four channels that lead in various diameters into the center or perhaps beyond this point. How can a comet have a distress signal? Director, do you have any capabilities for scanning for life forms? Yes. The range is quite limited. Are you able to reach the comet below us? Scanning. And there's a moment where you see a little element of a field deployed below. And in this moment, you hear, there are no life forms within 200 feet, but this comet penetrates deeper than that. But... Do we stop? It's on the edge of the drift. If we fall in, we'll die. Are we able to safely get closer to scan deeper into the comet's surface? Displaying results now, and you can see suddenly just popping up across the viewport in three dimensions, about, about 160 feet deep uh, of these three primary tunnels that kind of go down into the comet. You can see one about 100 feet wide, uh, 
even your large ship can probably enter to the top, but as it goes down, maybe 50, 60 feet in, it gets narrower and narrower, and it would be a really tight fit, if possible at all. Using our new shuttle. The next tunnel, about 60 feet across, and your new shuttle could fit into even that. And this one a little cleaner. You can see elements of very straight places dug away, and thinking about this, Gibbs, a comet wouldn't have a distress signal. Right. But a ship colliding into one? Perhaps. And looking at this damage to the front, uh, perhaps this ship still existing within the interior of this space. You can see these tunnels are quite deep. The third tunnel, only about 30 feet across. Just tight enough for the shuttle to fit. The possibilities of someone being in there are pretty small. Do you want to look? We can send a search party in the shuttle. We'll go a little bit closer, see if we can pick up their signal. If we don't get a response before it becomes too dangerous for us, we'll head back. This will stall our progress. In drift space, if someone sends an SOS, you need to respond. That's real space law, by the way, guys. <laughs> Don't know if you knew that, but that's real. I did it. Good to know. Next time you're out in space, respond to those SOSs. All right. I'll go. I'm getting ready. You should stay here. If there's someone in distress, who better to heal them? We can return to the shuttle. You don't we always have that luxury in time. Ship. She makes a good point. I, I can go. remain here with the director. Fine. I have my hands filled with yes, spice right now. Yeah, I am. I literally I can said I Are you in the cockpit the now? Oh. It's like Alexa. <laughs> um, speaking of which, I load up my Alexa. Okay, you start getting the drone ready. What preparations need to be made for the shuttle to exit safely in drift space? As long as the shuttle does not touch the sides of the cosmic clouds, the chaotic effects should not affect the shuttle. I can help you steer. I know you probably don't it's need it, but I can assist you. One pilot vessel. Well, I can help. Okay. <laughs> Shane's just gonna start walking to the shuttle like. I load up my. Um, oh, uh, not gonna question it. <laughs> environmental suit, and I okay. grab one of the ham dinners. No problem. I'll I'll take a ham dinner with you. Helps uh, Gibbs into like her suit and stuff. No, no, I don't want to wear. It. Oh, I guess I should wear it. Probably. You should probably yeah. should. <laughs> All right, I put it on. It doesn't problem. look good though. I look like a cat wearing pants. Are you eating the ham dinner inside the suit? Like the arms go limp and you see your arms pop up and you're just eating it? Yeah, Bob's just like putting it around, around the ham Yeah. Nice, perfect. Good. Great. Wait, pour some gravy in first. <laughs> you pop open like the emergency hat and just dump a little gravy in. It sloshes in the front. So your visibility a little impaired, but no problem. Open up the oxygen tubes. Yes. Yeah. No problem. So uh, who is going on the shuttle? We have two gifts. of us. We have shade. Okay. You're staying. I'm staying over to watch over Spice. Okay. The ship. Yep. Okay. Problem. The two of you get into the shuttle. Shade, you key this up. And as you do, first of all, it again states out, congratulations on your new um, Maxim Tech shuttle. Please enter your name and password now. Skip. <laughs> <laughs> you skip it. And the shuttle <laughs> kind of starts up and... You see all systems go. Uh, for, for being in space and kind of unattended for so long, the ship's in relatively good shape. And without any issue, if you wish, you can detach. I am going to detach. No problem. You detach. And as you set up into the drift, you have a beautiful view. This is designed to be very much like a... Uh, a, a shuttle for people kind of like traveling in a local system mm. and so like uh, it's called the stargazer for a reason huge single piece canopy mm. uh, and as you look out and across um, you can see these three tunnels one much wider but seemingly a little bit more chaotically uh, built there are these like strands of ice that stretch across hard to tell how big or strong they are from this distance. Can I figure out what might have caused the tunnels? Yeah go ahead and make a Sense motive, physical sciences, or life sciences check. Your choice. All have different possibilities. Fly safely, department manager. <laughs> 17 for sense motive. Okay. 
Looking at this, you can tell something impacted. There is damage and this little bits of like snow coming away or the ice definitely showing that something hit and then caused this debris to displace. The gravity of this comet allowing it to stay close. Um, looking at the tunnels, the center one, you can see very clearly there are divots on either side. Wings. It seems as if a craft perhaps slammed into the front of this. Um, and that would lead you to believe that at the end of this tunnel, there is probably a starship. I'll go to the one that's probably got the starship. So all of these seem to kind of connect in places, but there is but like main channels. And the way that you can kind of look at this is you get really close. The largest one has the most obstacles, the most potential for pitfalls. Mm -hmm. The narrowest one, the hardest to navigate, but seems to be the clearest overall. Mm. So it's a, a choice here, a balance between how how much you want to tr uh, trust your navigation ability versus how much you want to tr uh, uh, be able to kind of sense the things around you. I would like to be able to sense the things around me, I think. I can help. What was your check? Sense motive. And that was 17, right? Okay, yeah. That's what you got. Yeah, I would like to take the path that allows me the best ability to so the smallest sense path. our surroundings. Okay. And it's the clearest, but the edges are the narrowest. And so you get a you're sense that here and there, you're going to have to pull some little maneuvers to get around corners. I feel better about my piloting than my whatever the other um, thing is going to be. As we're saying goodbye and they're leaving, I'm going to turn to Echo. Um, Echo, um, maybe you could, you know, help me plant some of these plants I have. And I, like pull up like the beer can pod and like some of the seeds and stuff <laughs> yeah. while we sit in the cockpit and, and wait for them. I do not feel particularly positively about taking my attention away from the comms panels. Oh, it, it will be fine. It's it's just routine. It's 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 gonna be fine. Come on. And I'm gonna like take her hand and I'm gonna like bring her to the cockpit. The Echo <laughs> will follow to the cockpit but not pay deaths. attention to the planting. <laughs> the second that you like turn away is when all of a sudden like a little light starts blinking. Yeah, no problem. Well, they're probably gonna like play stuff on Echo. Like, okay, you're holding this now. Sure, Echo no just problem. like puts it down in like the co pilot seat. <laughs> So you do this process. Yeah. Um, for the two of you, you begin to move through these tunnels. You kick the Maxim Tech shuttle into gear, and as you move down the first 30 feet, no problem, you do need to twist and turn. Uh, go ahead and make a pilot and check, Shade. It Can I support narrow. him by massaging his neck, like the neck massager? Wait, I don't you, know. With that Where's experience, <laughs> I would say all of a sudden, Shade, you feel uh, I have gives, a lot of medical experience to know. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You feel it gives behind you their little Yosoki paws dig into your neck. Did she clean but, your nails, though? Interestingly, it does. It hurts at first, but you recognize it is the kind of pain that isn't necessarily bad. You can feel like your shoulders release a little bit. You didn't realize you're kind of holding your breath, uh, which is odd considering you don't need to breathe. <laughs> it hurts that so good. Back in. Um, what was your check? Uh, that was a 26. 28 with a plus two conditional modifier from Gibbs's shoulder rub. Nice. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And with that, no problem. This first place where it seems to pinch in, for a moment you engage this uh, function that allows you to almost hover, and you basically turn completely sideways and you reverse back, kind of hooking around, <laughs> allowing that <laughs> sort of <laughs> T-shape to maneuver around a, a, an outcropping of frozen stone. It's like when you're playing Tetris and you have to get yes. the T-shape into the spot. Exactly. You to, yeah. Exactly like that. Is anyone else getting first date vibes? No. <laughs> it's not a date. <laughs> so you it's go a risky over, mission. <laughs> as you shift, you, you touch yeah, uh, Gibbs' paw, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> we do the ghost <laughs> thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Your scanner. I fart. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> Environmental sensors. No. Your scanner's beep. Uh, and as you look over at your radar, you see the tunnel ahead of you, as it reaches its kind of 200-foot range, suddenly seems to almost expand, like the other side of this comet. Mm. But on your visual, you just see dark. Mm. Bad times. Oh. Uh, I flick the floodlights on our... Sure. On our thing. <laughs> These six lights go off, and all around you now, better illuminated, and about 60 feet ahead of you, you can see uh, little particles kind of floating here and there. 
But the end of this, and you don't see the drift cloud, so mm. definitely not. You're this is like an enclosed space. Okay. Maybe a hollow comet, mm. but you just see dark. So pretty large. Hmm. And as you go another ten feet, another twenty feet, you still see dark, you still see dark. And getting to within twenty feet of where that dark began, all of a sudden the light about 180 feet across hits the other side of mm. this ice. Uh, Echo, Make a perception it... check. Oh, sorry. Echo, okay. Can I do that too? Yeah, you're there. Twenty-three. Yeah, so They're obstacles. I hate it. Dan's very. Uh, I gotta get my own dice obstacles. after the break. Cause holy it's like shit. Pinball. Yeah. Um. Twenty-three. <gasps> oh, oh, so cute. Eee. Sorry, twenty-six. This is a fuck oh. off. So <laughs> the two of you like mash your cheeks together, looking out, and then you just kind of push gives away and look. <laughs> and uh, no problem. The two of you looking out, you can see this space. Uh, like a wide open space, and luckily it gives the floodlights on. As you approach, you can see the ground below frozen. Mm. There are icy, like strands of ice that connect, uh, like elements of the the wall to the ceiling. Um, and as you're you kind of enter this overall open space, it is much more easy to navigate. Nice. It opens up into this huge chamber, and you can see just frozen chunks of uh, rusted metal everywhere. The SOS signal increasing gradually, and once you enter this space, it becomes very clear. Hmm. Echo would periodically check in and just like try to hail the shuttle just to make yeah. like its status runs. And no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I, response, nah, like, I, yeah. All okay. clear. <laughs> close, you're able to communicate. Yeah. No problem. Okay. And uh, as okay. she's doing that, I'm like haunting, like handing Echo like seed packets to like open and stuff like that for me. <laughs> it's important that they're dark, but not too cold. Yeah. But also, you water them, but not too much. So. I'm sorry, so we went through a tunnel, now we're in, we're like, in like, this a big, big cavernous cavern. space. Yeah. Yeah. So can I see where some of those intersections of the other With things the 26, were? 26, you can see there is a number of other uh, tunnels, not just the three that you saw, others on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say the other ones are all much smaller. Mm -hmm. The one that you saw that the ship made, probably about 60 feet, and with that perception check, as you enter and kind of stop your momentum, down. Slow it. Yeah. And continue towards the, and, uh, the signal. <laughs> uh, detect magic. Okay. Just for funsies. What is the range? Like 30 feet. I don't know. You don't detect any magic. <laughs> but Shade oh. and Gibbs, as you oh. guys continue slowly, you do know below up, you. There is a mesa of ice. Mm. As you near it and get close to the 60 feet range, suddenly, Gibbs, you do sense magic. <gasps> And as the lights at 60 feet, exactly the range that your lights reach, uh, hit this mesa, you see frozen crystals of metal that seem to be almost cubes of metal with these uh, rods of uh, crystalline blue within them that seem to almost pulse faintly. Uh, you can see a starship that has seemed to crash onto the edge and then gone over, so it's just hanging over the edge. Mm. Then maybe like a 20-foot drop to the surface of this icy comet below. Mm. That's We need to go there. I need to go to that, that lake. Can I try Not to... a lake. It's like a it's some visual it perspective. Yes, please. Oh, unexpected. Oh, wow. Okay. What it's is this little detour this you guys water. went on? <laughs> It's a mesa. It's, it's a seems like, big plateau. Seems it's a like plateau. Joe was hoping that Shade would follow protocol. Wow. <laughs> I can count on some of you for something. <laughs> oh, always got to answer the SOS. Chaos. It's space um, here law. We go. Here we go. Talon said it correctly yeah. in the chat. If someone sends an SOS and you're the ship that goes by, Right. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, I love another winter wonderland. Here we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Exactly. As it's seen, you guys are approaching from the north. Yeah, exactly like that. And so you're seeing now the ship. You're seeing uh, all this kind of stuff. And if you want, I would say with your previous piloting check, no problem. You can bring it in for a very soft landing right on the edge. So is the magic I detect the pillars or the ship? In the it's ship. coming from within the ship. Oh. Can I try to hail the ship yeah. again on their comms to see if there's a response? You try to hail the ship, but there is so little power. You can't even, if you reach out with your exocortex, you can't even connect to the ship. Mm. This is the last little bit of power. 
-hmm. It is so faint. Although, interestingly, it does seem as if maybe some magnetic activity from this surrounding metal and those crystals seems to be providing a little bit of ambient power to it. So perhaps how it's been able to broadcast for this long. Okay. Would I um, eventually go to come back to scene with me and Echo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go back there. Okay. Not to worry. Um, all right. I think probably prepare to do I'm some bark. I'm scrambling down. Yeah, I'm okay. good. No problem. You scramble just make down. sure you put your helmet on. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. uh, I got peanut butter in the rim. You think that's a problem? Ah, it'll be fine. Yeah. It'll help a stick. <laughs> Shay's like, good thing I don't need one. <laughs> no problem. Uh, getting the laser pistol out just in case. Sure. Because it could be a trap, but also ready to offer aid as it is an SOS. No problem. Do we have a tethering cable, like, to uh, tow, a tow cable? You do not. Like okay. Again, Stargazer Shuttle, not really meant for, like, towing things around. But no problem. Every ship is meant for towing things around. You and, you and uh, uh, Shade, Shade mm. exit the ship. Um, go ahead. Uh, to get out, <laughs> you're exiting from the rear. And this oh, is hanging I would, over. I would okay. land it a little yeah. less. I didn't know where we were. No problem. No yeah. problem. So you guys really exit out. And as you come out, you can see this little crystalline structure right in front of you. It is metal. But the inside does seem to be almost gem-like. It is metallic, but it glows faintly. Like electricity mm. might be running through it. Do I It's yeah, cool. Do know you, anything about do know? that? Yeah. Have I ever heard of that? What is this Make a life thing? sciences check. Can I also make a life sciences check? Yeah. 25. Is it a life? 25. Yours is better. With the 25, <laughs> interestingly, there does seem to be a bionic or a biological component to this. When you look at this glow, this is almost speaking of bioluminescence to you. Mm -hmm. But you go over, you look at it, this is certainly metallic. You see rust on the edges of it. Um, you've never heard of anything like this, but you have feelings that this is certainly organic. I whisper to it, Little Rock, we're not here to disturb <clears throat> you. But we are here to rescue someone. Hope that's okay. You can see the lights on all these rocks seem to almost pull you towards the ship. What uh, what kind of ship is it? Interestingly, Shade, make a make a uh, we'll, we'll do this culture check for your your piloting yeah. thing. But you've never seen a ship like this, uh -huh. and you're really looking at components, seeing if you can place, make, model, paint, color, anything. Can I sense motive the pull? Is that a malicious pull? Make a sense motive check, absolutely. Or... So that's... Uh, math. 17 again. 17, okay. So 22 minus 5 on the, the check. Okay. So first of all, with your starship check, this is not a ship that you're familiar with. Mm. You are familiar enough to know that this is old. Mm. This is... Maybe like Pepco old. Mm. Um, you've never seen anything like this. The color is weird. The material is kind of strange. You've seen, there are elements of it that remind you of USR, but maybe pre uh, uh, Unification War. Um, hard to tell, but you don't recognize it. Likely, no one is alive. Since. I told literally told you that like thirty minutes ago, but here we are. So now we're gonna see it through. And Gibbs, I really want to go. You're looking around because you feel really uncomfortable. Oh. This feels almost like the lights in a landing strip, guiding you somewhere. And when you think about bioluminescence and how that's used to lure things in, it does feel a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, Can I? detect the rust on the crystals is that like it's eating it or that's like the byproduct of it how do the rust and the crystals relate because that seems like crystals are metallic and the rust is corrosion you look around there's ice everywhere Got it. and that's also kind of odd it's drastically colder in here and different than the exterior Shade, I'm I'm picking up a little bit of magic and to be honest I don't think I've ever seen magic in the wild I really want to go into the starship, but the fur on the back of my throat is raised. And Gibbs, as you like edge over and try to peer in the cockpit, with that identify magic, there is this glow from within the driver's seat. It's, it's gotta be too good to be true, right? 
What is good about this situation? I've never seen magic in the wild before. I found my jar in a, in a landfill, but- How are the occupants of the vessel? I don't know. I would only- You just looked in, what did you see? I saw- You're still about 15 feet away. The glow, I uh, saw a glow. I'm gonna go know. to check the cockpit Wait, as you should for the no. SOS to make don't sure Don't touch that anything. I, I'm following the proper protocols. The things are magnetic. <laughs> you follow the protocols. Gibbs is like, stop, and you're like, that's not part of the protocols. So you approach the ship. Can I cautiously make a perception check to make sure? Because I want to see if the occupants are yeah. alive, and if I can verify, you, then we can. Can go I back. whip my tail around his wrist just to tether us together? Sure. Cool. <laughs> I'm not. I'm letting you move, but we're moving together. Yeah, I know. You're magnetic, kind of and I am noticing not. Noticing as I start forward. Uh, that's a nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. So you begin to approach, and as Shade just walks forwards looking for this SOS, you wrap a tail around him and move forward. Gibbs, with your check, already so anxious about this, knowing that this bioluminescence likely means you're walking into a trap, you're on a much higher alert than Shade seems to be. And so you see it first. Can I react and pull back? You can. Nice. And I pull the tethered Shade with me, okay. I hope. Over top. You can see at first it's another chunk of metal. But as Shade walks directly underneath it, for some reason nobody ever looking up, uh, you can see in the dim, dim light here in this space, a shape detach itself and begin to drop very quickly towards the ground. Run! You hear Gibbs say, and you feel this begin to unwind. But as it is 8.15, we're going to step away from <laughs> it. Ah! And then come back Encounter. The so we will be back in just a moment. Please, uh, there will be a timer. We'll see you in just a second.
and welcome back to Mosaic Team 5, our Starfinder campaign. Oh. Let me go ahead and just drop us back into our combat camera. Cool. <clears throat> As we are dropping right into combat here. No. So, uh, Sheed, go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, that's cocked. Sweet. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Let's get to this. Okay. So, Shade, what'd you roll? 14. <clears throat> 14? Yep. Oh, man. You know what's so funny? For Christmas, somebody gave me a little pad of paper that's so perfect for initiative, and that's what that's I was going to so use funny. it for. I forgot to bring it downstairs. Freaking thing. Uh, no worries. Okay, it's 14, Jim. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So, the way that this is going to work, Gibbs, you are going first, followed by this creature. Sweet. Followed by Shade. And then the rest of the crew can go as a unit until you get into a range in which you might be able to do something. Oh. <clears throat> so, Gibbs, as you look up, you see this mechanical piece of the wall move away, and it drops quickly, faster than it probably should just given to gravity, and you get the sense that it has some other form of movement. Magnetic pull. But <clears throat> it lands, and you see these talons dig into the snow, it writes itself, now taller than shade, almost like a mechanical spider. You can see maybe 10 feet long, a rusted iron carapace. You can see optical sensors of some kind. It's hard to tell whether this is mechanical or life, but as you did not get a life signature from it, you would imagine maybe mechanical. But it's weird, not like anything you've seen before. And as it looks at shade, even over the uh, sound of your, your kind of comms, you see spittle as it seems to hiss or do some kind of a noise in this vacuum of space. You don't hear any noise. <clears throat> um, da -da -da -da. Gibbs, what do you want to do? I told you so! This makes my blood boil! And I'm going to cast Wall of Steam, okay. uh, which lets me <clears throat> do um, a wall that I pick which side hurts, and it's a five foot long wall, okay. and I can curve it. So can I curve it like around? So five foot long, you said? I'm guessing it's longer no. than that. No, no, sorry, it's um. Five feet wide. It's five feet wide. Five feet wide. One second. It has. It must have. Yeah. <laughs> Please, old folks, new spell. No, that's my range of it. That's how far away I can cast it from it. Um, okay, well, it works like Wall of Fog, but yeah. it, that's, it tells me it works like Wall of Fog. Okay, but and what I copied from Wall of Fog didn't <clears throat> tell me the range. So, so for Wall of Fog, give me one second here. So this is a billowing wall of steam uh, that is... 20 feet long per level, or a ring with a radius of up to five feet uh, divided by two levels. A ring? Can I do a ring around that creature? With yeah, a radius you absolutely of... can. All right, can I? Yeah, so I will ring it around that creature so that way we can get it um, there. Okay. Driving that, and it's, I'll put the steaming side in to the creature. Yeah. So it takes um, 2d4 fire damage. Go for it. It takes four fire damage, and it deals this damage when it appears and on my turns on subsequent wall. If it passes through it, it'll take damage. Um, there's ways you can, like, disperse it if you care, but you don't care about that kind of thing. And I will use my movement, and I'm going to move to the door of the cockpit to try and, like, start next turn opening okay, it. Okay, no problem. So you run, and as you feel the anger within you well up, your blood boils and all of a sudden, the snow in a ring surrounding this creature, as the spittle flies from its open orifice, suddenly just <laughs> into these gouts of steam. Bursts of ice crystals erupt outwards and go everywhere, and for a moment, it's like you're in a space illuminated by the floodlights of your shuttle that is just covered in diamonds. And then it just <laughs> all across the cavern. Um, but yeah, it seems to do a little bit of damage. How much was that? I'm sorry. Four damage. Four, Four damage. fire damage. <clears throat> it seems to be nice. just a standard amount that it okay. does, but no problem. Uh, the steam seems to almost make it contract inwards. But that is your turn? Yep. Okay, you end up right over at the top of this uh, ship. You can see into it, uh, slumped over the wheel, there is the remains of 
a humanoid, a Lashunta, some kind of a, a, a humanoid creature. And the glowing is, because that continues. You see a faint teal glow that seems to be coming from within the spacesuit itself, like mm-hmm. a like a amulet, like a necklace. Oh wow! But that's just a great to hang almost right over the heart. Yeah. <clears throat> Come this far, you might as well. That is your turn. That brings us to this creature. So. <laughs> Uh, at the start or end of its turn, what is the... the... Um, so it takes damage on my turn, but it also takes damage when it passes through the wall. Okay. And so immediately, the first thing that it does is it rushes through the wall, trying to burst towards shade. So go ahead and roll your damage. Two. Okay. Four. Four. So that's... Ten. Ten, ten. Dam- yeah. Ten damage. Two, four, four. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ten damage. <laughs> Let's double check. Okay, no problem. Ten damage. As it bursts through, the steam erupts around the metal and you can see elements of the rust scraped away. But it bursts through and surrounds you with these scythes, uh, Shade. And Shade, you are going to be taking a number of attacks from this creature. Oh, no, just two. Oh, but still a number. number. (laughs) That is a number. That is a number. Even one is still a number. number. The first one is going to be a 35 to hit. Sorry, 34 to hit. Is that KAC or EAC? KAC. Yeah, that is. (laughs) And the second one is going to be a 33. Yeah, that also hits. No problem. So Shade, as these two uh, metallic tendon or uh, talons kind of just slash into you, you take 13 uh, points of piercing damage from the first. Oh, damn. Ooh. Oh, ooh, and damn. maximum damage, uh, which is 20 points of piercing damage. Whoa! Oh, as it is. slashes Shit. into you once and then again in each of these cuts, it seems to be both piercing and as it pulls away the mechanics sense cold, intense, <coughs> excuse me, cold. Um, but it pulls away, yeah, and you can bleeding? see it begins to kind of lumber forward again, ready to strike, but that is its turn. That brings us to you, Shade. This creature seems to loom over you. What do you want to do? Um, ooh, uh, I'm gonna use my move action to jump jets to the other side. Uh, the mm, can wall I of steam it? is, tw- yeah, I mean, you can. It's a five foot radius, so you can. Five but foot it is radius, and it's 20, 20 feet tall. It's 20 yeah. feet tall. Yeah. I can go up to okay. like 30 feet and just jump over <clears throat> it to this side. No problem. Um, so you activate the jump jets and <sighs> over this wall of steam. Then using my new action, yeah. I'm going to use my distracting hack feature. Okay. Um, using my Exocortex's computer hack to cause the... mm, Now Gibbs is on top of it. Uh, What are you doing? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I guess, do it on our ship to cause the ship to start blaring a siren. Yeah, like, uh, which... I don't think it has a save on it. Let me check. I'm pretty sure it just happens. So I'll say you know that sound does not carry in space. You just saw this creature hiss at you. So I'll say, yeah, like flashing lights. lights Yeah, that's what I mean. Like flashing lights. The sirens would also be going off, but it's basically like putting it into panic mode. Yeah. Um. So it's just you can hack a computer within 30 feet to distract that foe. Uh, such as with a sudden noise or image, you must be able to access the computer yep. with my yep. uh, exocortex. Um, this functions as a faint action. Oh, okay. So I use the faint action, okay. essentially, with my exocortex. <clears throat> so that is competing against, right? Uh, I believe so. Who knows faint Sense actions? Sense motive check, and that Both is going of us to be... And that's against my... 27. A 27? Yeah. So all of a sudden, the lights begin to flash. And Gibbs, you kind of squint as all of a sudden these are just high beaming at you. But you see this creature kind of turn and these blue beams that seem to be almost eyes just narrow and focus. Seems distracting. Cool. It's now <clears throat> flat-footed and I'm going to attack it. Nice. Go ahead and make your attack roll. Could you put this to represent flat-footed on the creature? It's flat-footed until the end of my next attack, so after nice. this. Oh. Okay, very similar to the operative feed, though. I believe so. Um, Sorry. That's a... 21. 21. 
<clears throat> so uh, this creature that is uh, against KAC or EAC? Uh, it's against EAC. Twenty-one hits. Nice. And as this creature turns and it just slams its talon into the light, trying to damage it, but unable to do so, you have an open shot. And as you move forward, you take a shot into the elements that seem to be almost joints in the carapace. That's going to be uh, eight energy and fire damage, I think. Seems to do about the amount that you expect it to, but no problem. Um, that's my action. And then my move action I already did. My exocortex action I did. I think that's it for me. No problem. Um, quick action is <clears throat> not to swap out pistols, right? No. Correct. I can sheathe it, but I can't. Yeah, you can yeah. stow. Yeah, or stow. drop. Did yeah. you take hit point damage? <clears throat> uh, no, I just took stamina. Mosaic Team 5, for the rest of you, there is this moment now, Echo, where you, as you have been, check in and nothing comes back. And then you hear loudly over the comms, I told you from Gibbs. <laughs> what would you like to do? You are about about 120 feet away through these tunnels. Like, we can't maneuver in there. It gets too narrow. That 100 foot wide tunnel, though there are strands of ice and crystals that do block the way, um, you can ram things and you could certainly fit this in. There are areas where if you're not successful, a, a great pilot could make it through, no problem. For all of you in a rush, you might be taking some damage, but you You're can fit a great it. Pilot. Don't let anyone else tell Do you, you know there is? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> can you take this fighter? Mm. I don't know. Gives us some damage focus. So other Shade. mosaic team members, what are you doing? Shade, report. Can I do Yeah, reaction, you get a, a quick quick response. Engaging. <laughs> Raise the spider! Raise the spider! Much more information from Gibbs. Yeah. Unknown Return to ship. Synthetic. Abandon mission. We can't. The spider's on the ship. <clears throat> you hear that? What are you guys doing to respond? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <clears throat> Spice takes her head up from Squishy Fox. Remains. Maybe lays it down gently and starts praying to Hylax. Okay. We warned them we would not be able to follow at a comfortable, safe distance. How far of a distance are they from us right now? 120 feet into the main cavern, roughly um, like 180 feet away. <clears throat> and you have a good fix in their location. I could, I could go out with my jetpack and try to get to them and help them if you could get me a little bit closer. I can do that. Director, prepare for entry. <laughs> you see <clears throat> the lights dim slightly and the uh, propulsion units kind of flare. And who is steering the ship? <clears throat> Echo, go ahead and make a piloting uh, check. Hold, oh, please, for divining <clears throat> the proper dice. And this is going Frank to be whether or not on these dice. Bubs is going to enter into initiative this turn or at the end of next mm. one. <clears throat> oh, shit. That's not bad. Uh, that's a 22. Okay. Nope, close. sorry, hold on, math. 24. <laughs> okay, well, that's close. As you begin to pilot through, you can see elements that are almost strands, and in a way, it almost feels like these icy strands are like a spider's web. But you take the ship and you find areas where you can collide with them to shatter them apart and not snag across elements or antennas, things that are easy to break. With no damage, you charge forwards, and you can get close to 60 feet in before you get to an area where you do need to start maneuvering much tighter. <clears throat> From this point, Bubs, if you want, yeah. I believe with your full action, uh, you're able to no problem get there. Okay. Um, I believe you are about, a, uh, with 60 feet, you're 120 feet away. Is there a way that Spice and Bubbles could like you propel two people? Echo or? gets on the local comms. Okay. Spice, prepare to man guns. You've got to uh, clean out your okay. suit first, anyway. Also oh, true. <laughs> oh, shit, I can't let. All right, Spice is going to wipe her tears away and end up in the gunner station. Okay, everybody go into different roles this combat. I like right? it. You run to the gunner station. Uh, I can fly 30 feet, and I believe it's four times your movement. Yes. Run. Mm -hmm. Is so this? That's 120 feet. Yeah, that's why I think you can. So if you wish. <laughs> As Echo is flying down, 30. you can run to the airlock 
And basically, as Echo gets to the part where it closes in tight, you can swing the ship to the side and open the airlock, so you basically fire bubbles out. Uh, um, Echo... You activate the jump pack, and you <laughs> rocket through this icy cavern into the dark. It's almost pitch black, save a small point of light, which is the floodlights of the ship illuminating just this mesa, and maybe like just the ground that you can see on this map around it. Um, but you rock it towards, and right at the end of your turn, you end up maybe five feet above the mesa, just like about to land. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you're right there, no problem. All right. Echo would have also alerted Bubs that uh, they're preparing like sp- spice to go to the gun, the guns, yeah. and there's Bubbles, blow you're up will happen. At initiative zero, so that okay. you, it is now your turn. Go ahead and oh, uh, okay. Uh, we'll start with. Or sorry, sorry, actually, I'm, uh, initiative. I'm sorry, you had initiative time. twenty and put you just in front of Gibbs, just for sake of the ease. Okay, so with that flying down five feet, I'm going to say it's a momentum of an attack, and I'm going to do a single attack okay, of nice. hammer strike. Absolutely, all the way yeah. Down. Nice. So if you fly Using through the dark, down smash. Yeah, you're using the attack. momentum Aerial of a starship smash. whipping you out of the tail end of it. Yeah, that's great. That is a five plus, my ridiculously high. I think it's 11. What is that total? Uh, 5 plus 11, so 15? 15? Uh, 16. That is going to be a miss. And so, Bubbles, with all this momentum, you bring the hammer back, it begins to glow, and you just realize you're like 15 feet too far, and you have to just, like, throw on the retro thrusters to not overshoot and end up on the ground below mm-hmm. the mesa. And at the last second, you have to pull back, you're unable to hit. Uh, that is a miss. Okay. Anything else, Bubbles? Uh... I'm going to move. Where is the window wall? The, the, the sorry, the wall is that big red dice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all around. No, the no, it's a dice. it's a circle around so, the dice. Yeah. yeah. So okay. like that wall, and from you, the side that you're on, it's safe. It's just steam. Can I get to Gibbs? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because it's no longer in it. Yeah. But I haven't dropped concentration, so it still exists. Yeah, I want to just... getting to Gibbs will likely oh. provoke an attack of opportunity. Okay. Can I stay within its range though to not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the you absolutely can. So you just kind of, you kind of move around, and as you get to the front, you miss with the hammer, kind of knocking a bunch of ice off the side. Yeah. And this creature turns, seeing you, begins to slash yeah. at you, and you have to maneuver underneath. You drop the hammer and kind of follow it under, picking it up on the other side. No problem. That's my turn. That is your turn. Um, <clears throat> Echo and Spice, could you roll for oh. initiative, please? And Bubs is mind. Uh, he's gonna psych himself up by saying. Um, the great philosopher Mike Tyson. Everyone has a plan before you get hit in the face. There you go. <laughs> Twenty. Twenty. Okay. Natural one. Nice. Seven. Right. I mean, so the way that that shapes that's out, good. bubbles just went. Then it's Gibbs. Then it's Echo. And I'm gonna need probably some reminders because I had to write it in real narrow because there's a lot of twenties <laughs> now. Uh, then it is the creature. Then it is Shade. Then it is uh, at the very bottom. Spice. Big ol' ones, though. So, Gibbs, you are up. Echo, you're on deck. Gibbs, you see Bubbles, big miss, kind of land in the snow, uh, goes underneath the creature, now right next to you, but you are right next to this ship. You can see this glowing magic talisman, amulet, whatever it might be, in the chest of the suit. What do you want to do? I think, sarcastically. Oh, great, the cavalry is here. <laughs> And then uh, I'll take a few slashes with my claws at the icy handle to try and, like, pry open the ship. Yeah, no problem. Um, if you want, as an action, you can open the ship. That's not hard. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you, you pry But I do it with flavor the of a feral animal. <laughs> yeah. So you rush over to it. You wrap your arms around it, grabbing it in this weird twisted kind of hold. And with your whole body, you yank it to the side. Kind of easily goes. And you almost fall. But the cockpit poof, opens. The guy's definitely dead. Certainly dead. And if he wasn't, <laughs> he's not wearing a helmet. You can see, like, the, the white of the skull, the base that does hint that it was a Lashunta. Um, you can see, like, the place where the antenna would have protruded. Um, however, uh, definitely dead. All right. Hello, I'm here, and I'm going to grab the necklace and also try and hit the button on the the cockpit to turn off the SOS signal. Okay, Mm -hmm. so as you open it, you can see there is this dimly lit button. You tap it and the whole console goes dark. Nice. 
And at this moment, you kind of like pull the uh, suit aside to do so. And looking down the neck into this cavernous space, because there's ribs and like chest bones, a little bit of frayed, frayed, tattered fabric, there is a glowing teal crystal. It is not attached to any necklace. It seems to almost float in this cavity. And Gibbs, you've heard about these before. These are ability crystals. These usually have the spirit of a hero trapped within them, and taking some time to commune with them raises your ability score. Uh, Raises one ability score by two. Um, It does take an hour to commune with, and once it's used, the the power, the spirit leaves. I say, hero, you're coming home. And I grab it. Holy jeez. As you touch the crystal for a brief moment, in the back of your mind, you can just hear, thanks, kid. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be so cool! Uh, and I shove it on the collar of my peanut buttered uh, suit. <laughs> okay, sure. Peanut butter in your so uh, shirt. Peanut there's like an exterior suit. skin that Gibbs is specially like, crafted that's almost a kangaroo pouch to just stuff shit in. It doesn't connect to the actual interior of nice. the suit, but it's just kind of for it's the whole... There was definitely a peanut butter and jelly sandwich yeah. in there from like a month ago. This is your <laughs> cheese pouch in the yeah. space yeah. suit form. Nice. So no problem. Cool. Um, not and then I turn and I will use my movement to get butt up with Bubs uh, kind of on top of like the crystal slash ship and I'll say thanks you got this I'm here and there you are that is Gibbs Echo what would you like to do the creature is up next uh, Echo is going to carefully try and turn the ship so that when they're back on board they can just Okay, make a piloting check. This is a tough one. Yeah. You entered in a way that you really can't turn that well, um, but you can certainly try. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. It's cocked. But n- that which one, one did I roll? You roll- on which one did I roll? You rolled the Christmas the- dice. I rolled the Christmas dice? Yeah, you're, yeah. Okay. So that, that is what it is. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's a 24. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's what you rolled before. That's I don't know why I'm freaking out. In this moment, you pull on the controls and you begin to turn the ship. You can hear along the outside as ice scrapes along, but the shields hold. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and as you do that, you turn and you do manage to get the ship mostly angled out. No problem. You get ready to just punch this as soon as your crew is aboard. That is your turn, Echo? Uh... Echo's also going to uh, open the out- outer door to the airlock. Okay. No problem. Uh, that way there's like a little space for them to just jet in yeah, if there's no someone sans ship. <laughs> so you open the door, the hairdryer still plugged in, kind of floats out as the pressure releases, and now it just kind of dangles. We don't need it. <laughs> it's it's still attached. Yeah. I mean, we don't need it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So that you happens. Echo, it. that is your turn. That brings us to the creature. So this creature uh, turned kind of hissing and now seeing both uh, Bubs and Gibbs kind of right in a nice line. (laughs) Can't hear you in the vacuum of space, but you watch the eyes flare much brighter. And all of a sudden the mouth opens up and a burst comes out. Uh, This is going to be a tackles against each of you. Wow. Terrible. Nice. Does a 13 hit either of you? Sorry, not a 13. That's way lower. Does a 17 hit either of you? Yes. It definitely hits me. Both Bubbles, as this frost ray erupts across and you recognize little strands of icy filaments, this is what created Mm -hmm. these filaments that you broke through on your way in. You duck underneath, you take your magma hammer and pull it in front of you, and that just evaporates into vapor around you. But Gibbs, you don't have anything warm to keep you safe against this, and this does strike you full. You are going to take 12 points of uh, ice damage, and you feel as these begins to crystal, sorry, cold damage, as it crystallizes around you. Um, should you continue to get hit with this ray on successive turns, it's going to get a lot nastier. I think, like, holy shit, this is now the second time this has happened to me, because Emma did the, literally the exact same thing to me. And I'm like, the fuck, man. And as a swift action, the eyes suddenly go dark. Uh-oh. And oh. the space 
in a ten foot circle around it is That's covered right. in magical darkness. Oh shit. Oh, magical darkness? It's fine, it's not gonna be a Oh, you are suddenly plunged into a perfect sphere of darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can still see with my low light vision and oh, no. eyes, right? This is magic darkness. Oh, it's magic. Yeah. So it's just. But I don't have to spell magic. So. That... <laughs> uh, but I. So can't you better do watch the fuck out. <laughs> that is his turn. He's going to stay right where he is because he's happy. That is going to bring us to Shade. Uh, did spice your own deck. Shade, uh, you are in darkness. You are. Uh, you have this talon ripped out of your body. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to use my move action sure. to train my exocortex onto the creature with my combat tracking. Okay, do you need to be able to see? I don't think so because it's part of my exocortex. Right, but I don't know why that would not have um, anything to do with being able to see. Can I but, but, say but, uh, something free action on his turn? Yeah, sure. I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything. Use your I'm nose, so glad you, can you asked the question. <laughs> Guys, I can't see anything. <laughs> Yeah, it's dark. <laughs> best best reaction uh, I think of our campaign so far. So <laughs> I assume it, we can't see them also from our ship. From your ship, you saw this floodlight and you could see like movement, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> dark, pitch black, dark. Oh. So it says I can designate them <laughs> as the, cor- the as the foe to track. Okay. But then it says as long as that target is in sight. It yeah, feeds you so telemetry and all of the stuff. Definitely, uh, yeah. you are unable to get any kind of telemetry or anything like that. Then in that it's almost case, like this like target missing and it's like searching for it. Um, yeah. And so like as soon as it is visible, you will gain the benefit from it. Cool. So then in that case, I'm going to use my move action to activate my double tap with my um, uh, versatile focus. Okay. And then I'm going to use my exocortex again to have this one go off now with uh, the um, distracting hack okay. to put it flat-footed go hopefully for it. again. Some space wars theme music. I know, I've been listening to <laughs> um, it. I believe it's got a beat uh, 17. <laughs> It doesn't have to be anything. Unfortunately, Gibbs purposefully turned the power off on the ship. The oh, last remaining I would, vestiges. I would be able to know that it's off because I wouldn't have anything to actually hack. Correct. I guess. I mean, theoretically, if we're being honest, when you tried to combat track it, that is your move action. It just didn't work. Oh, okay. So t- okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so then I'm just going to use my. Rules like yeah. I'm just going to use my attack then. There you go. This is uh, taking a pretty significant conditional modifier, you would imagine, as you can't it's see. still in the screen. same spot. Oh! oh let's go! Oh, in this brief <laughs> moment of like darkness and everything, you feel this jolt as it seems to jostle you, and your android reflexes, you reach out, you grab onto it, and you can orient yourself very well based on that. Cool. Uh, go ahead, roll damage, and if you have any critical effects with your weapon, they do apply. Yeah, I do. All right, so... And it's double the dice? Yep. Like normal times? Like normal times at this table. Okay. So plus one. Oh, nice. That's what that does. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so, sorry, I just gotta look up with the... So I think it's irradiated? That's dope. Irradiation okay. is a sucky thing. Yeah. Um, so it's irradiated. Ooh, shitty dice rolls. But that's... Um, sorry, math is hard, man. 16 points of E and F damage. Nice, okay. So as you uh, reach into the dark, you grab onto something, and pulling in, you fire. There is no flash, there is nothing in this magical... Uh, sort of aura of darkness, but you feel heat across your hand as something seems to shred and release oil or fluid or something. Um, It feels like a pretty good hit. And then you feel that heat seem to almost stay and begin to glow as that irradiation does take effect. And I'll say a shade, you know, as part of that natural 20, it's a 10 foot radius and it does kind of spread and expand 
you do want to be cautious around an irradiated creature um, oh. for what it's worth. Oh. That being said, anything else, Shade? Uh, that's all I can do, I think. Yeah. Can a radi- irradiation, like poisoning from someone, spread to someone else? Yes. Is, uh, is radiation sickness? That does not spread, but radiation can spread to other people, yes. So if I attack this guy and I'm, or he attacks me, I get irradiated? You don't know? Mm. So, uh, da, 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 da. that is your turn. That brings us to the top of the round. Spice. Oh, sorry, Bottom right, Spice. I'm going to put you here in the So I one. can't see anybody in the cloud. You So in that, like, ten-foot sphere, total darkness. Which is, which is, has the spider and bubbles and shade in it? Basically, oh. that entire, you see just the top. I'm in it. Top, oh, you are? You see yeah. just the top, top, top of your purple ship and, like, one floodlight. And that's it. All right, so I'm going to... Mesa. Yeah, I'm going to hold my action until I see spider legs. Okay, no problem. And, and what are you going to do for that action? I'm going to shoot. So I feel like I have to... I think with Fate Starship Combat, I have to make a gunnery check before I can shoot. But okay. I want to shoot cautiously if that's... I'll take a penalty or yeah, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. You certainly can. So, so yeah. I don't hit my friends. No problem. Thank, thank you. So you hold until you see something, and then you're going to take the most cautious, and you're going to shoot on the edge Just of the darkness a little pew. to do as little damage to whatever is inside as possible. No problem. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm just going to squeeze the trigger. Just a yeah. tiny little pew. That is your turn. You get ready. You have uh, the turret like squared away, and you know starship weapons do a tremendous amount of damage. I know to, that. Uh, and I don't want to do that to my friends. So you get ready, and you and you really tune in. You focus. You wipe the tears out of your eyes. This is for the dead foxes. Bubs, yep. you're up. What do you want to do? Gibbs, you're on deck. I would like to. Uh, first, Bubs is going to say, um, Gibbs, are you still behind me? I'm here. I'm good. I can't see anything. I know. It's fine. I can smell you. Um, oh, wait, that's me. It's just my suit. Oh. Um, if I, like, free action, like, reach my hand back, could I, like, touch her? Sure. Okay, yeah. My tail's there. Yeah, okay, so we, we've established where each other is. At you go over and you just mush your hand yeah. into Gibbs's face. <laughs> okay. um, and I'm just going to, um, just based on where he last saw the monster, he's going to swing again. Straight yeah, go ahead. Uh, and it's going to be a single attack. Is it? This is a 15 plus 11. Do we attack with disadvantage? There's no disadvantage. It's, it's a minus six. Yeah. It's minus six. Uh, what was it? 26. 26. And that is against KAC or? Uh, it's my physical hammer, but it's magma. I forget it, if magma It is, is. KAC. No, but no problem. That hits. Nice. So you swing into the vague darkness, hoping that you don't hit your friends. And you feel like you probably didn't. None of your friends are this metallic. Yes. Well... That's a five plus fourteen. That's twenty. Nineteen percent. Nineteen. Damn. That thing's a hundred percent pure. You slam into it with the hammer, and uh, over the darkness, a few sparks do fly. You'd imagine many more within, but a couple do ignite. Uh, and for those of you back in the ship, you do see this kind of of sparks. Anything else, Bubs? That's it. Okay. That is your turn, Bubs. That brings us to Gibbs with Echo on deck. Gibbs. Uh, learning new spells. I didn't realize both detect magic and wall of fire were concentration. Ah. So wall of fire or steam of fire or whatever yeah, would have we'll gone away. Uh, so my bad. No worries. Um, it doesn't change anything. No, it doesn't. But it, I say it out loud. The big red die is no longer true. Mesa. Yes. It changes that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't need to see anything to attack it, uh, because I am magic. So (laughs) I, knowing where it is and knowing what it is, uh, will just find its mind telekinetically. Sure. And will cast Mind Thrust at the second level, requiring it to make a will saving throw. So, Gibbs, you uh, will saving throw? Yeah. And And it's at second level. This is pretty good. Um... Uh, that is a 22. Okay, it passes, but it takes half damage. Okay, no, that's, everything counts. Oh, 10, 7, 2, 10, 7, 4. Saying them out loud doesn't have to do that. <laughs> 12, 11, 23. Uh, 23. So 23 divided by 2 is? Uh, 11. 11. Cool. The, so 11. This creature has an intelligence score, right? 
Great question. Actually, before you tally up that damage, it must. It does, yes. Okay. Cool. So you uh, reach out and you let out this psychic shriek into its mind. And it's weird. It's an alien sort of feeling. This is not a consciousness like anything that you've touched. It isn't a machine. This is some weird quasi form of organic creature, but it's something far beyond anything that you've touched before. And so you're unable to do your full amount of damage. You kind of skid down the side of the starship. Uh, uh, leaping off, I'm going to... Um... I know where it is, and I know it's got legs between me and the starship, so I'm gonna try and ping pong through the legs to get to the starship. Okay. uh, Using all of my senses. No problem. So the way that that's gonna work, it's getting an attack of opportunity with a lot of conditional modifiers that are not in its favor. Cool. Um, However, it it is not affected by the darkness quite as much as you are. Yes, but I am small and annoying, Um, so I will try and speed it this way. That is going to be, that's better than I thought, uh, 22 to hit. Yeah, of course that hits. No problem. <laughs> so as you try to dance through, you hear, or you don't hear, but you feel the impact of these sides as they strike the ground. Ah, my tail! You, and then all of a sudden, one just slams into your tail, and that is going to be 15 points of piercing damage. Nice. As it just pierces and then pulls out. And then as you, like, skitter away, you hear, as it just kind of, like, slashes at that area, but you were gone. That is your turn, Gibbs. Uh, oh, bonus action. Um, no one's hurt, so now I'm good. Okay, Everyone's good. There we Everyone's go. still Gucci. No swift action. That brings us to Echo. Creatures uh, on deck. Echo's going to hold their action until everyone's on board ship. Uh, and then once everyone is on board, uh, they're going to full power thrust away. No problem. Echo, you get ready. You watch. You see the sparks, but no teammates yet. You wait. That is Echo's turn. That brings us to this creature. This creature uh, within the darkness seems to almost kind of maneuver. And then I would say, in order to do this, it is actually going to drop the darkness. And it's going to move, uh, provoking an attack of opportunity, if you wish, from Shade and Gibbs. And Spice. And Spice. (laughs) Uh, It's going to try to move to the other side of Bubs unless it gets vaporized by Spice. Because starship cannons. <laughs> what is? So should it be the starship first that's attacking? Oh, you have range on that. Um, da, 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 da. So the way that this kind of works out, it drops its ability. I'm going to say spice. Go ahead and make your attack first. Okay. Don't roll bad and kill me. Well, I'm doing it. I'm gonna. I don't know what the actual rules are, but I'm gonna use the starship rules. It's still gonna get to go, similar to how a starship would get to attack. Natural starship. nineteen. Oh. Yes. Okay. Plus all the modifiers to hit. It's going to be Gunner's B- thirties something. Yeah, that's a hit. So <laughs> roll damage. Well, I do I get a minus four having it being a targeted one? Because I don't want to explode my friends. I think there is a rule for ship to ground. There is. No, 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 there is. Um, And you're still dealing full damage. It's very, very precise. You got a great hit. And so go ahead and roll damage. Oh, bro, man. Okay, here we go. Uh, So damage for this. I'm just doing a regular attack because that's... It's 2d4. Okay. Thank you. That's 2d4 against a ship. Mm -hmm. Which is like... So four... 2d40 against Three, a seven, seven, seven from a starship cannon. Okay, give me one. That's second. really not that much damage. But it's, it's from a starship cannon. Yeah, I believe it's 70 damage. Yeah, yeah I think it's seven. times 10. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because <clears throat> it's just, since it's ship to, ship to creature. Yeah. Rather than ship to ship, it's like times 10 damage, yeah. I think. I remember I looked this up because, um, I think Echo almost did it to you guys. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> da, 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 so it is... Without looking it up, I know it's a lot more. I'm going to say 10. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit point uh, damage equal 10 times this than it's amount damage. damage. Okay. So it's 70, 70 points, points of damage. damage. <laughs> At this moment, it drops the darkness Vaporized. and it leaps forwards. It does get its attacks off. And so uh, it is going to, I think, in this moment, attack... Bubs. Yeah. Sorry. Bubs, you take two attacks from it. The first one is only going to be a 22. Nope. 
And the second one uh, is going to be a 25. Nope. All right. And so wow. it gets really close to you. You can see it's like screaming in space. You don't hear any kind of hiss. You see spittle. And as it goes wide and all these talons come up to strike you, suddenly you see like this halo of light backlight it. And it gets brighter and brighter before all of a sudden a starship laser strikes it from the side and spice. Your shot just annihilates this creature. Woo! Um, completely vaporized. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> it had 20 hit points left, and uh, you did 70 hit points worth of damage to it. So no problem. You wipe this creature off the face of the earth. Uh, as soon as it like the flare clears, Bubs, your eyes, like, you go blind for a second. You were in absolute darkness for the first time, probably since yeah. you were in the womb. Like, true, <laughs> actual darkness. And then all of a sudden, starship cannon. And so uh, you have to blink away a couple times. But in this moment, as you have destroyed this creature, I am going to take you out of initiative. Nice. Well done. Nice. <laughs> Calming the away team. How'd I do? Nice job, Spice. That was awesome. Nice, babe. Gibbs, in this moment, you have an ability crystal. Um, and so that is something that you have tucked away. Uh, and as the little elements of ice kind of fly around in the space, um, you are in a place now where, if you wish, you can kind of look around a little bit. Uh, otherwise, Echo is quite ready to leave. Are you satisfied that the SOS is resolved now and this was dangerous? I'm going to finish the necessary protocol to confirm that all help has been rendered possible. Who's in the um, ship? And then I'm going to see, because I haven't actually checked the ship yet. Make a perception check. And then I'm going to see if there are any salvageable parts on this ship. Yeah, sure. Can I look around this guy's like nest and see if I can figure out more about this creature? And Make a life sciences check, yeah. Thanks. 28. With a 28, you get closer and closer, and as the ship opens up again, you can see there is no power. This thing uh, badly corroded, badly damaged over the years of being in this cold and fairly damp space. Give me one moment to pull up the correct part of my notes here. What you would notice as you get a little bit closer, there is some um, iconography. Uh, these are languages that are not necessarily familiar to you. They do um, have elements of common, but these are old human languages. Mm. Uh, maybe like Italian, mm. these ancestral languages that the humans spoke. They used to speak like just tons of different languages. Mm. Um, hard to tell. Uh, go ahead and do a culture strike. With that search, though, not a lot else. Um, you can see, you know, there was probably armor integrated into the spacesuit at one point, but long since so badly damaged, not a lot salvageable. What, are you doing? what, are you... what was that culture check there? It was a six. Hard to tell. Um, Orange in color. Clearly, all life is done here. Yeah, I'm satisfied now. I feel like all the proper protocols have been administered to. Gibbs, what was your check? Uh, it was 15. And I'm trying to figure out, the creature had spell casting. The layers got like a lot of, like there's an ecosystem here. That With your life sciences check, not spell casting. This oh. is a magic-like ability. Mm. But also kind of putting together, what are you trying to determine from this? Um. Was the layer feeding power just to make this a trap? And was this creature really smart and intelligent? With that check, hard to tell about intelligence. Mm. But, I mean, this did seem to be like a lure. It did seem to be like a trap. And looking around, there is no organic material. So probably it eats uh, metal. Mm. And the power sources really where it's deriving. You look at these metallic, very strange organic looking pieces of metal. And you wonder about these. These seem to maybe have been formed by this creature. And thinking about spiders and their nests, perhaps eggs, mm. but certainly not finished. Mm. Aside from that, with that check, hard to tell much more. Yeah. Um, I'm going to join Shade over near the car, or the ship. Sorry. Um, I would be 
finishing up probably and then heading back to our shuttle at some point yeah. once it thoroughly examined to make sure that uh, the safety protocol the has been <laughs> administered to. I'm going to just like talk to Shade um, and send him like a calm chat, just me and him. <clears throat> what are you looking for? Making sure that we've thoroughly made sure all signs of life are no longer present. Are you sure everything's good in there? Yeah, or Good. Uh, Bub, make a perception check. <clears throat> okay. Kind of glance over Shade's shoulder as he continues to look across. 18 the plus items. 9, 17. Nice. <clears throat> Sorry. 18 plus 9, 17. Oh, um. 27. 18, no, yeah, 27. Yeah, 17. 27. 27. No, um. Okay. 8, eight plus, plus, plus. I didn't mean to say 18. I meant to say 8. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. No problem. There is something about this ship and about the material of this creature's clothing that does feel like you've seen it before. Mm -hmm. Similar to Driftmas, maybe in the past, maybe in a film. Hard to tell. I I don't know why, but this ship reminds me of something. It's probably nothing. Um It's a very old ship. Yeah. It is. Um, we should get back. Boop, 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 boop. And you're left alone with the ship? Yeah, as I'm walking back, I think I'm just going to uh, look at it. Um, in Bubs' mind, he's like going over um, like, like uh, just like ideas and things he wants to do. Um, he's going to follow a shade of the ship, though, and go okay. inside. No problem. You follow. With your whole crew aboard, if you wish, you can depart and make your way. As soon as Bubs is aboard, before the door even closes, Gibbs takes off. And without any trouble, you can return to your primary ship. Nice. Nice, we did it. You all return, having retrieved an ability crystal. And I pull it out. It's kind of glowing blue and show it to everybody when we get on board. Damn. This is almost like a matrix or a, a crystalline prism mm. of teal. And as you shift it and move it, every now and then, it's almost like you can see images, maybe memories. Um, for those of you who have heard of these, these usually contain the spirit of a hero. Those who have, similar to all of you, um, found some kind of purpose or drive to keep them around after mm. they've passed, usually they're able to impart some amount of insight and uh mechanically speaking they raise a stat of your choice by mm. two nice what's your name hero you gotta ask that yeah are you touching it uh can, will you let me touch it this is someone's soul this is as physical representation as you can get Someone has to take ownership of this. Who... Who needs it? You found it, didn't you? Who it's... better than to, to take care of a soul than our medical officer? Okay. Finders keepers. No. I mean, I'll take it if you don't want it. It's like it likes you. But that's not scavenger's law. It should go to whoever needs it most. It's not finder's keeper. That's more of a freshies thing. What? Well, if you want to give it up, maybe we pull sticks? What's your name? I'll ask him. You begin to think that question, but you recognize if you begin to communicate with this, you will act oh. on it. And so, you know, this oh. that's part of the process <laughs> yeah. as you discover um, about this hero. That's part of the community. Oh. I can find out his story and tell you. Okay. I think I want to do this in private, though. Okay. And I'll go to my med bay and I'll okay. take the crystal with me. No problem. You go into the med bay. This place, um, very clean. Uh, the Alexa now tucked back in place, um, you unable to, to really use it for this mission. Um, you Why had is it, it so clean in here? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no problem. Yeah, a little cleaner than you left it, which is kind of weird. But 
closing the door in this dark space, the blue light kind of reflecting here, are you going to ask it something? I'd like to know your story. Okay. You hold the crystal, you say those words, and as you look at it, you kind of turn it to the left, and you see on one facet a face looking back at you. A Lushunta. You can see the skin almost like um, the same shade that you see at the very base of a leaf of lettuce. It's white, but ever so slightly this pale, faint touch of green around the edges. Um, they squint back at you, and they can see uh, you hear this voice behind your ears, almost in your head, similar to the telepathic messages you've received from Spice. Another mystic. I've been waiting for a long time. And because it's 9.15, this is where we're going to end for this evening. Oh, my God! Good pick, though. I'm glad you guys chose the Mystic. Um, so thank you so much for staying with us for this uh, session of Mosaic Team 5. We'll be back next week, uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Twitch. But if you can't wait that long for some role-playing, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Kara takes the DMC for Adventures in Alberon, the final session of c So please stay safe. Uh, it is crazy out there. We'll see you tomorrow. See you, space boyfriend. Pew, 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 pew.